Looks good. All right. Uh, sounds good. Test, test. The band is loud. Good evening, folks. Welcome to CPA here in Nashville, Tennessee for tonight's 3A playoff first round matchup between the visiting Good Pasture Cougars out of Madison and the homestanding Christ Presbyterian Academy Lions. Good Pasture comes in with a record of 5-5, five and five. CPA at 10-0, so it's the number two seed in CPA hosting the number seven seed in its quadrant in Good Pasture. It's a big game between two rivals who are very, very familiar with each other, including three games in the past 16 months. It's game number four. These teams are very familiar, and there's uh, quite a bit of heat in the series. 12-8 in the history. Good pasture leads over to the Lions have won the past three games in the series. Phil Newman here along with Adam Hollis, our man Bobby Brooks on production, and uh, the infamous Jimmy G, James Gilmartin up on video. Great to be with you this evening for a big, big playoff opening round game. Adam, we talked about the fact that this is a big matchup between two teams who know each other very well, and it's a chance for them to uh, revisit this rivalry and see if CPA takes another step forward or if Good Pasture takes a step forward. Well, uh, a really amazing effort uh, this year by Good Pasture to win three straight to just put themselves in a position to be playing in the playoffs. Of course, we talked about earlier, CPA just, you know, 10-0, and really rolled through the season, and, you know, these two teams are playing – uh, I think for the fourth time in the last 16 months, they are no strangers to each other, especially in the playoffs. CPA is really with the three straight wins over over Good Pasture, including the opener this year, 14 to seven. And you know, if you're Ingle Martin and CPA, probably the last thing you wanted to see last Saturday morning on the bracket release show was a draw against <laughs> Good Pasture. Um, and you know, obviously undefeated, getting a two seed, um, just because of the way their quadrant, uh, you know, really shook out. But mm -hmm. obviously, you know, uh, they've got to feel good. CPA does about having the three straight victories over Good Pasture and obviously beating them this year already. Absolutely. Three, three victories in a row for CPA over Good Pasture. Three victories in a row this season for Good Pasture to end the season 5-5. Five and five. They came back from a lot of adversity, some suspensions, some difficult losses to win those last three, and uh, they averaged 29 points a game in those last three games uh, to go 5-5 five and five and make their way into this first-round game. And Doug Martin's just been doing it forever. 21 years as the head football coach at Good Pasture Christian, and he's been to the postseason every time. 1992 was the first of that run, and Amazing a long time run. ago for some of us. And and Ingle Martin talked about it this week, how he wants to get CPA to be where Good Pasture is. Coach Martin, of course, his second year here at the academy, CPA, uh, and uh, his uh, has very very good success last. Last year, going to the state semifinals, they're losing that heartbreaker for CPA to Milan by a safety over there in Milan. And then Milan, of course, went on to uh, actually get uh, throttled pretty well by a tough, tough CAK team out of Knoxville. Here's a little stat for you. Ingle Martin's lost two games since he's been the head coach at CPA. Maplewood, Maplewood by one and Milan in the semis last year by a bucket. Three points. So, so he's got, he's got two that? losses by combined three points. So he's done a remarkable job here, here at CPA. Lions, of course, led by senior quarterback Albert Mitchell, who is a Samford commitment. Albert has uh, more, more than 1,000 yards passing on the season. Also, Chase Smith, number 22, the running back for the Lions, will, has run for 1,196 yards. So they've really got a balanced attack through the Lions. And good pasture, a lot of running this year. Yeah, they really do. CPA, great word to use for them, balance. They want to run the ball to be able to set up play action and let Albert Mitchell take some shots down the field. Of course, his favorite target this year was somebody he didn't even have to throw to last year, Thomas Richard, with eight touchdowns on the year. And, and of course, Chase Smith, an unbelievable year, over 1,100 yards rushing. We know he's an outstanding defensive player as well, 21 touchdowns. I mean, Chase Smith really is the guy that makes everything go for the CPA offense. Of course, early in the season, Todd... Uh Rather, Glenn, like that Glenn Fleener, Todd's his father, I think. Glenn Fleener goes down with a knee injury yeah. out for the season. May Chase Smith have to step it up, and he certainly has done that. Speaking of injuries, CPA has a couple tonight that may be critical on the linebacker 
front. Yeah, their linebackers, they are depleted. Of course, you just mentioned the, the early season injury to Glenn Fleener. That was obviously costly, not only from a playing standpoint, that Glenn starts at inside linebacker and also starts at fullback, really splitting time with Sam Landers. They both kind of are starters on the offensive side of the ball. But then you go forward, you lose Houston Nichols, you lose Chris Charles, and Sam Landers is going to give it a go tonight, but he's not 100%. So, uh, you know, their linebackers are really a cause for concern. Good pasture course led by a couple of different running backs. They've got a couple of different fullbacks. Eric Reed, a tailback, number 24, will run the ball quite a bit. He's come on strong. David Martin was saying yesterday that uh, Eric Reed has really emerged the past couple of weeks strong, along with Carter Wiseman, 29. And then the, the big story, one of the big stories, the quarterback, eighth grade quarterback, C.J. Laws. I cannot wait to watch a 13-year-old eighth grader. I mean, you want to talk about Bright Lights Big City. <laughs> you know, eighth grader starting a playoff game on the road against your crosstown rival, and wow. everybody knows. I mean, this for for three A football, this is Alabama Auburn. Absolutely, it, it really is. Nick Adamopoulos will take the kickoff for Good Pasture. We mentioned Laws. He's only thrown the ball eight times, two for eight, 24 yards, and two interceptions. He hasn't thrown much. He's handed the ball off quite a bit so far in his three games. It's a short kick by Adamopoulos. Taking mine up, man. About the 30-yard line. Making a move there. Good run back by number 17 for the Lions that time. Andrew Manuel. So it'll be first and 10. CPA past the 40 at about the 42-yard line. Good good starting spot, spot for CPA. This yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, with that mortar kick, you're always trying to get it to hit the ground. Manuel's got some of the best hands on the team for CPA. He starts, at, you know, he starts and plays significant time at the wide receiver. He's also a safety, and uh, you know, can do some things with the football when he's got it in his hands. Good so question. that was dangerous for good pasture. So it works out. Uh, we'll see if the Lions capitalize on this good starting field position. First and ten at the forty-two. Likely we'll see. Well, hold on. Mitchell goes over to the side looking for. I he believe his, something. His mouthpiece. Ah. See how much time is on the play clock. Don't even see. I think there, I think there, it's plenty of time for the Lions. I'm not sure they use. Mitchell, man in motion. Gilman, hand up the middle. Chase Smith. I think so. Not much there for Smith. If it is he, maybe a yard and a half. And Hager's a guy that, since he's come back, has really made a difference defensively for good pasture. And you're going to notice CPA is not going to take too much time. This is high octane. Second down, eight. Hand off Smith to the right this time. A sweep. Looking for room. He'll be crunched down. A flag goes down. Tackle made there by combination of Jason Arrington, 44, along with number 26 for, for good pastor Grayson Irwin. Well, that uh, looks like it's going to come in the area of, of holding, but uh, Chase Smith looked like he had a little bit of a little bit of running room there. Looked like he was trying to feel his feel his way through, and you know Chase has been a guy that for for CPA that it, he he needs carries. It takes him a little while to get going, and then he starts to he starts to wear you down a little bit. So you just got to keep giving him the football. Penalty, I believe, was declined by good pasture, so it'll bring up a third and about six. Well, make it eight, actually, at the 45. Lions have to get to the 48 of good pasture for a first down. It'll be Mitchell in the gun again. Well, Osborne and, and Godwin are in the game down here at the bottom, and they are both getting man coverage. In motion goes J.R. Osborne, number seven, the sophomore. Mitchell looking to throw. Has a man. It's Thomas Richard. It's caught. Nice catch by Richard. He was guarded right there by Carter Wiseman, but Richard went up and grabbed that one and came down with it. Nice little, nice little concept to the field, little curl slide. They slid uh, Brown out to the flat, and Albert Mitchell's just reading the flat defender there and threw an absolute dart. And you mentioned uh, Richard, a favorite target of Mitchell this year. Hand off to the right side. It's Chase Smith. Smith has some room. Chase picking his way downfield. Good vision that time. He's down to the 32, really close to another first down for CPA. Very patient run by Chase Smith right there. Got right in between his two pullers. And they're going to move the chains, Phil. 
Yes, it looks like a first down. So Lions are driving. They have the past couple of games. CPA has uh, had very strong opening game drives. Handoff. This it's Smith the other way this way, looking for room. A flag goes down again. Smith will be hammered down there. Nice tackle made by number 44, Jason Arrington. But there's a flag. We'll see if that may be holding again. Well, clearly the CPA coaches liked something on film that they saw on the perimeter, and they are doing a nice job of getting to the perimeter right now with Chase Smith. Two weeks ago, I think it was, uh, CPA had Chase Smith run five times for 80 yards on the first drive. It was 80 yards for Smith and a touchdown, and they like to get that ball to the senior running back early in the game, and like you said, get him some carries. Uh, two, holding, two holding penalties. Not good way to start, I'm sure. Those are drive killers. It'll be yeah. now first and 20, back at the 45, 44 and a half in the game. I think for the first time is Max Presley on the far side for the Lions. Richard down on this end. In motion goes Presley. It's a handoff to him. A sweep to the right. He will get not very far. That play was stymied nicely by Good Pastures. James Moore. Moore. Really, yeah, James Moore really forced the issue there, Phil. And then they they got there with some other folks. Jalen Moore got there to uh, kind of clean it up. But Good Pasture looking active defensively, uh, getting to that perimeter run game right now. And that's why you're getting the holding calls. Brings up a second down and long, about 20, 22 actually now. Albert Mitchell in the gun again. Mitchell back to throw. He's going to roll to his right. Looking down, really threw that one away. Looks like, well, James Elliott, number 72, was the only man in the, in the yeah. vicinity of that one, and he's a lineman. So. Yeah, I think he was trying to check that down to Will Godwin, and he almost threw a pick to Michael Gregg. Good. Real nice play by Gregg. Good coverage there by the good passer to force that one. Now third down and 22 for the Lions at the 44. CPA is going to their CPA is going to have to burn a timeout. They look here. at the, uh, the the clock is running down and the good passer sideline is quite exuberant and loud right now. Very good visiting crowd here uh, for Good Pasture at CPA's home field the Den. And it will be a timeout called to Lions will be their first, so a little bit of confusion there. Yeah, the penalties, the penalties really hurt this drive. Looking for a great place to advertise your. Oh, excuse me. Here we go. Uh, let's see if we let's Bobby. You want to do that one again? We'll see if we can get this right. <laughs> want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Then contact contact us at at sponsorships at playonsports.com. We offer season packages as well as individual game coverage, highlight DVDs, and an opportunity to raise money for your sports program. Again, that's sales underscore sponsorships at playonsports.com or call us. All right. 9.54 to go here in the first. It's Mitchell in the shotgun again. Back to pass. Looking long downfield for Richard over his head. Well defended there by a couple of uh, Cougars, including Jake Herod, I believe, 28 was back. Jake Herod and Grayson Irwin had Richard bracketed. And, I, yeah, I got to think, you know, that's going to be the one spot. That's going to be the one spot that you're going to know that you're going to, uh, you know, that you're going to be going to when you need you, you need big down and distance. And, you know, why not, Engel Martin, take a shot there? You know, worst thing you're going to do is punt, and you've got to figure you you got a chance to pit, pin good pasture and go out and play some defense. Not such a bad thing. So good pasture holds the Lions to a short drive, a couple of minutes on that one. It's going to be punting. Osborne, the sophomore, punting down. Ball hits at about the 11, gets a bounce. All the way to the end zone. Slow, slow bounce there. Lions couldn't quite get down to down it. So it'll be a touchback. So uh, you got to say, if you're good pasture, that was a strong uh, start to the game defensively. Yeah, that's a win right now if you're good pasture because what you want to be able to do in a playoff game on the road is be able to come and kind of settle yourself into the game. And it was just a you know just a real good gut check course, aided by a couple of unforced errors, penalties. a couple of penalties, right? No question. Uh, but now we get to see the kid go on offense. Here we go. It's C.J. Laws. They call him the kid under center. Hand off. To the fullback up the middle. Decent gain on first down for Arrington. Jason Arrington, number 44, the senior fullback, takes the ball, gets more than about six. 
and that won't be the last time we'll see that play tonight. I mean, you know, the Lions are going to have to be able to stop Arrington inside and make good pasture go to some other options, you know, preferably make number two, the eighth-grade quarterback, have to keep the ball in his hands a little bit tonight. Because about 5'6", 150, they list him at. Laws, handoff again. Similar play. This time I think it was to the tailback. I lost the number, but it was either. I think that might have been missed. Wiseman or. Yeah, it wasn't Reed. It was Wiseman. Wiseman. Carter Wiseman, a junior. They'll run Wiseman. Eric Reed, 24, will get the ball quite a bit, as well as the fullbacks uh, starting with Jason Arrington. So here's a big spot right now in the game. I mean, you know, 8.43 left to go in the first quarter, and you got a third and three for good pasture. And you really, if you're Coach Doug Martin, David Martin, you'd like to get a first down here. Here we go, third and three. Man in motion, hand up at the middle. It's Arrington again. Arrington will be stopped. Nice play there. First man to hit him for a CPA was, I believe, Chase Smith. But it might have been one of the linebackers. Yeah, it looked like Joe Trice, perhaps. Yeah. It's, well, they're going to say, yeah. either way, it's a fourth down and, th- and three. No, well, maybe a one-yard gain. Fourth and two from the 28. So good defensive stand there for CPA. Yeah, Joe Trice was there, and Chase Smith kind of cleaned it up and just it was almost as if CPA knew what was about to happen. Back to punt now. It's Wiseman who Coach David Martin says is one of the best punters they've had in quite a while at Good Pasture. We'll see if this one is an example. A high, high punt down. Fair catch called for and made. A little bit nervous right there, but J.R. Osborne made the fair catch at the 38 for CPA. Wiseman, Coach David Martin said uh, he's really pleased to have him as a punter. Well, among and, other things, and he's yeah, he does, he's a do-it-all guy for Coach Martin over there at Good Pasture Christian, and you know if J.R. Osborne doesn't handle that ball cleanly, Eric Reed's going to be right on it. That was really good coverage. It's so fortunate for CPA that uh, the sophomore Osborne came down with a good hands for uh, J.R. as well. He's a player that many Good Pasture fans don't want to see again after last year's playoff game, in which he hit the game-winning field goal on the last play of the game, and that playoff game quite a finish for. The uh, freshman at that point. That was an exciting moment, I would think, for Mr. Osborne. Mitchell has Richard in motion, going to pass, perhaps toward Richard over his head, though. That time we saw Mitchell trying to pass back across his body. Yeah, Albert's got to get his, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Martin Engel, Martin's going to, hey, this is tough with two Martins. I'm sure, <laughs> it's we'll the Martin just call, Bowl. We'll just call him Engel. I'm sure Engel Engel's going to try and tell him when you're sprinting to the left, you got to get your shoulder tucked so you can, you can deliver a good football just a little high on that throw. Quite a pedigree at quarterback, of course, for the coach. Here's a hand up the middle, Chase Smith. Smith looking for some room. He'll be stacked up, though. First man to get him is number 55 that time, Wyatt Wolf. And then Grayson Irwin came down the chimney and made a nice. I mean, that's what you want to see <laughs> Merry from Christmas. your safety. Yeah, that's what you want to see from your safety. As soon as that running back pats his feet a little bit, be there to finish. Yeah, the linebacker was the first hit, and then the safety with the finish him off. So it's going to be second. Rather third down and six now for CPA. Back to pass Mitchell. Mitchell now it's a keep. It's a planned quarterback's keeper, but it's going to go nowhere or maybe a yard or two. Stacking up Mitchell there that time was a several Cougars and Clint, including Wade Arrington, the junior number fifty four. Flag goes off. A flag goes up though late. Now Jason Arrington and Wade Arrington both showed up there. The brothers, the Arrington brothers. Yeah, and they were they were on uh, they were on that quarterback draw, and I thought that was pretty. Yeah, you know, pretty good safe call. But now, you know, if you're CPA, you're, you've had two third and you've had third and a million and you had to take the shot against, with Richard and then you had third and six. And personal you, you foul know. there, I believe, against good pasture, uh, Adam. Yeah, that's a break for CPA. Big break for the Lions. Um, and that, I think it was a little extracurricular activity after the play. That's a, one you're going to kick yourself if you're Coach Mark, David Martin and his uh, staff over there. Sure, especially with as explosive as CPA can be offensively, you give them another set of downs when you should be getting the ball back. 7.03 to go first quarter, first and 10 Lions at the 43 of Good Pasture. In motion is Richard all the way across the field. Mitchell drops the pass. Mitchell looking long. Who's there? It's J.R. Osborne. Runs under it, and it's a touchdown for CPA. Nice pass and catch there. Mitchell to Osborne, the sophomore, and the Lions draw first blood. Great call. They brought Rashard in motion, and everybody thinks Rashard's going to be involved somehow, and then you run the post back behind, and J.R. Osborne was wide open and just goes to show you good pasture defense shouldn't have even been on the field right there. Yes, with the penalty. That, that's a number of the penalty hurts you immediately. 15 yards marched off, and the Lions get a big play. Osborne, I think, in single coverage there looked like against him. He's a tough matchup to be He's speedy. single coverage. He can run. He's a good fast. athlete. 
So Lions go uh, up 6 nothing over the Cougars. And now he gets to score it and, and Osborne kick it. will attempt the PAT. Out of the hold of Andrew Manuel, the snap of Robert Brown, I think it is, for the Lions. Kick is up and hits the roof of the field house there. It's good. So 7 nothing CPA with 6.48 to go in the first quarter. Welcome back to CPA here in Nashville, Tennessee for tonight's big 3A opening round playoff game between the visiting Good Pasture Cougars and the homestanding CPA Lions. 7-0 CPA just scored that long pass. Mitchell to Osborne. Now Osborne will kick off. Two back to receive for Good Pasture, including Wiseman on the left. And it's kind of a line drive kick that Wiseman will pick up. Looking for some room. Wiseman gets away from the first tackler. And not the second two. A flag goes down in the area where it could be illegal block. We'll find out. Eric Reed was back there, maybe the culprit on that one. So we'll see where they mark this one on the, on the flag. John Luke Duvall, the big fella down there for CPA, on making tackle. a nice play. Real interesting series. The game within the game right there. Good pasture. Christian does a nice job on defense. They snuff, out the, they snuff out the quarterback draw and do something to get themselves a penalty, keeps the drive alive, and the next play, CPA hits the post for a touchdown. A long, yep, long. That's something you want to avoid. Uh, you give him another, another life right there. Yeah, the well, did. yeah we'll, we'll see. And now you, give, you get yourself in deep, deep uh, right. territory, your own territory at about the 11. It'll be first and 10 for good pasture here. Hand off to the right. It's uh, Wiseman, I believe. He'll be dragged down by the jersey. Not before a sizable gain, about seven yards, it looks like, from this vantage point. Yeah, nice job by uh, Arrington leading Wiseman over there on the right-hand side. And, you know, good pasture does a lot of down blocks with fold blocks. So they're going to block somebody down, and they're going to pull a guy around, which, in, you know, is the essence of the wing tee. And they execute. I mean, where good pasture gets you is with execution. Second down, four yards to go. C.J. Law is under center, the eighth grader. Handoff to the left. It's uh, Eric Reed, 24 this time. 24, he'll be stacked up. Nice uh, job there by the Lions. I think it might have been, yes, it was Mac Keck, 44, the first man there, the sophomore linebacker. And Eric Reed, I mean, he really did. Reed did a nice job there because he's close to a first down I think it may be a first down he's got a first first down down. good good job by Reed yeah and he was probably three three yards short at at first contact so he does a nice job of keeping the legs churning and and pushing forward and that was just yeah it was all number 24 on that first down right there because that was that was snuffed out by CPA he appeared to be stopped short for for sure now be first and 10 at the 21 for the Cougars trying to get something going here Wiseman under center oh it is Wiseman He'll keep it, and he will twist his way for about five yards, tackled by Richard. Thomas Richard on the tackle, but not before. A little bit of a wildcat set up there. Get him, got him five, about five yards. Yeah, they put Wiseman under, underneath the center and moved, kept Laws in the game, kept Laws in the game and, and had him split out down here at the bottom of the screen. Notable, um, more than halfway through the first quarter, no pass attempts so far for good pass. We'll see how much they throw. Not much, probably, if yeah. they can run. Yeah, I wouldn't think they're going to they're gonna start chucking the ball, and that's why they've got to play good defense and keep it close. Laws back under center, handoff to Wiseman going to his right. Wiseman has a crack. Wiseman gets a first down and barrels over a tack- Will be tackler there. That was Joe Trice that he ran over there. My goodness, nice run by Wiseman. Yeah, it might have been. It was either Joe Trice was or Trice? Xander Isaacs. Maybe Isaacs. I think it was Isaacs, and 
Well, a little and, bit smaller and, than and, and Carter. Price. That was a good, tough run. I mean, most, you see a lot of those running backs just going out of bounds at the sideline. He lowered his shoulder and finished that thing. So first and ten, the second first down in a row on this drive. 4.45 to go first quarter. There's a penalty be illegal motion on the far right side of the line. I think it was uh, number 33 that time, Chad Connors, who moved first. That'll back you up five. And, again, you want to avoid those kind of mistakes to stay in this kind of a game. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that good pasture uh, would, be, would be so jumpy and, and making so many what I would call mental mistakes right now with all these penalties. And that's got to be their fifth penalty of the game. And we've still got 442 left to go in the first quarter. So now first and 15 from the 27-yard line for good pasture. Law's back under center. He has two backs behind him now in motion goes Reed. It's a keeper. Laws may pass it. Yes, he will throw. Looking downfield. In the hits it in the back. Will Gilman in the back. Intended for Wiseman, or rather for Jake Herod, 28. That's, yeah. that's kind of thing. Could be called interference sometimes. If yeah, it was, cl- it, was, it was definitely close. But, you know, I think, I think this, you know, what they looked at was that it was an underthrown ball. Uh, I think, you know, and C.J. Laws had Herod early. He just held on to it too long. It was that young quarterback, inexperienced, star- not throwing the guy open, needing to see him open before he let go of the football. Now second down, 15. Laws, handoff this time to Wiseman going to his right. Wiseman will be dragged down. Nice pursuit in the backfield there by a line who I believe was James Elliott, 72 perhaps, the Furman commitment. Nice play there. And it was a real nice play, and they went back to the well on that uh, last time. Last time, Good Pastor ran that. They ran that for a first down. That time, CPA was there. And now you're in a dangerous, you're in a dangerous spot here with third and 16, third and you know, third and 17, with such a young quarterback. And you know, you've got to play it safe. But with as explosive as CPA is offensively, if you're Good Pastor, you've got to put some points on the board and start moving the football. Under four minutes to go, first quarter. Now Laws will keep it momentarily. He will be taken down. That's Elliott again. James Elliott with two big plays in a row. And that'll be a punting situation coming up for Good Pastor. Yeah, and Good Pastor is so good up front on the offensive line, but really is matched by CPA. I mean, these are the defensive line for CPA and the offensive line at Good Pastor Christian, I thought coming in tonight would be the key to the game. It definitely is a, there's some big boys on both sides down there. Yeah. Fourth and 24 now punting from about the seven will be Wiseman. This one will not turn over. Fair catch call for it, and it's muffed. Did Osborne get on it? I think he's back on it. He may have. You said it a minute ago, Adam, that uh, that other first punt was dangerous. Yeah. That one was even more dangerous. Yeah, because Reed is getting down there in a hurry. And that time, he Sawyers. Was, Ashton Sawyers was down there as well. They had both gunners free to the punter pretty quickly. CPA is going to have to do a better job with their punt block team out there on the perimeter. You can, because sooner or later, that's tough for J.R. Osborne to constantly have guys in his face when he's trying to catch the punt. Let's decide whether to get out of the way or make the fair catch and come up and take it. How's this for field position? 48-yard line, first and 10, CPA, Mitchell in the gun again. He's got Chase Smith behind him, and in motion goes Max Presley. Fake hand off up the middle, now Smith. Smith gets nowhere. Nice play there by the interior line for good pass. He'll be stopped. Well, he may, I guess they, give him, they may give him two yards on the forward progress. A good defense right there by the defensive line of Good Pasture. That's, I mean, he, he got about a yard there, and that's probably that's probably the toughest yard. <laughs> he got met by a the wall there. There were a lot of folks in there on that one. So we'll call it second down and nine from the 49, just about midfield. Throw out to Osborne in the flat. Osborne makes a move. Osborne, can he stay in bounds? No. Wow. Jr. was just that close to dancing down the sideline, but it will be very close to a first down. That could have been a penalty on J.R. Osborne. It sure did look like he looked was like he moving moved. towards the line of scrimmage. I saw the same be- thing you before saw. Before that ball was snapped. So CPA, they might have gotten away with one right there. Referee on the, on the lines, I, I may see him looking for maybe for his pocket for a second. Maybe he changed his mind. It was very, very close, no question. But it will be, they're going to say it's third and short. Oh, they're going to measure, actually. Okay. I thought, was, I thought he got a first down based on where he went out of bounds in the, in the mark. We'll see if that with the chain gang. Yeah, he was tight roping on the sideline. And 
Nice, nice job of staying in bounds and even making it close. And a good throw by Mitchell, too. A laser out there before anybody could get uh, near Osborne. He had the ball in his hands. We'll see if he really has progressed, down. progressed nicely as a quarterback. Well, Albert, we talk, Albert Mitchell we're talking about. That I mean, first game at Goodpasture yeah. two, uh, two years ago. Two years ago, he gets his, uh, not unlike C.J. Laws, you know, getting Absolutely. his first start in this rivalry game. And Albert Playoff. Mitchell had to make his, his in, in place of Nolan Genovese mm -hmm. on the road at Good Pasture as a sophomore. Tough assignment. Tough assignment. That's Imagine how, how C.J. Laws feels as an eighth grader. <laughs> and you mentioned Good Pasture's defensive line. They were all over it, Mitchell that, in that game. And C.P.A. got not much going that night, and Good Pasture moved on. So now first down and 10. It is a first down to 42 of Good Pasture. In motion is Smith. He'll take the handoff to the left. Two blockers with him in front. It's Hooper and, Mi and Mitchell. Flag goes down, though, as Smith churns his way for about five, but I believe it may be a holding call. Wow. We uh, Now, you might – this <laughs> this is unbelievable because we've had a slew of penalties on good pasture. A lot of hankies and, on and good I, pasture, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and this one's going to go on CPA. And, you know, ironically, it comes on the heels of – of what we thought was a procedure well, penalty on J.R. Osborne, which ended up being a first down. So maybe a bit um, of justice there. Yeah, <laughs> Who knows? yeah. Who knows? But it will be first and 15. Well, let's see. Actually, it's longer. It's first and 20. Was it a hold? It was. It is first and I think, well, actually, it's they're marking it first and about 18, 18 to go. Yeah. Okay. Spot foul, perhaps. Mitchell has three receivers out, two backs with him. Takes it throw. Rolls to his left, looking downfield for Richard. Is wide open. Thomas Richard makes the catch. Still going. Richard breaks the tackle down to the five, spinning his way into the end zone. I believe. Wow, what a play by Richard! Sprint out after Richard, the catch. Richard ran an out and up, and Good Pasture was not home. Just a terrific, terrific throw by Mitchell, and a nice run after the catch by Richard. Absolutely. They ran a little out and up. Probably they've been running outs on their sprint out all year long, and they caught good pasture taking a peek. Impressive throw, impressive catch, impressive run after the catch. Amazing, breaking several tackles and, and fighting his way into the end zone was Thomas Richard that time. So 13-0 Lions go up with the extra point pending from J.R. Osborne. Snap, kick, and it's good. Two touchdown lead for CPA this, at this point with about a minute and 59 to go in the first quarter. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. This. Back here at CPA in Nashville, just under two minutes to go in the first quarter. And the CPA Lions have taken a commanding, well, not commanding, but a strong early 14-0 lead. Kickoff by Osborne is a long one. It'll go into the end zone and automatic touchback. You were, we were thinking during the break that uh, good passer better get something going soon or this game could get out of control if they're not careful. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's dicey for good pastor Christian. Yeah. Because of the quarterback situation, because they're playing such a young, inexperienced guy at quarterback. And so now he has no history of being able to throw you out of a hole. He doesn't know what it's like to drop back and have to throw the football for you. You've got to stay with your game plan and hope that you can get a score here before CPA gets another one. Here's the handoff from Laws to Eric Reed. Reed will gain a couple. And really, good pastor's done a good job of moving the football on the ground, but penalties have hurt. 
Tackle last time by Matt Keck, the sophomore linebacker, is getting a lot more playing time because of the injuries uh, on the CBA side. Yeah, and Keck's a good football player. He's going to be very good, very active, loves the game. Of course, his dad, Father. Danny. Of course, dad, Danny Keck, one of the foot, one of the coaches here at CPA, does a great job. One twenty-seven to go, first quarter. In motion, it's Wiseman takes the handoff. Wiseman will be thrown down in the backfield by it's Elliott again. James Elliott, beast. They're not blocking him at all right now. Beast. That'll bring up the third long. James Elliott is one of those kids that's long and is very active and very good with his hands. So when you're trying to block him, he's he's putting those long mitts on you, and he's getting separation, and now he can look to see where the football is and does a real good job. He's what I would call a sudden player. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say he's fast. He's sudden. <laughs> he's there before you know it. Yeah, just just he's got some he's got some fast twitch fibers. Oh, that was a hole though called against the Lions, I believe. So that'll result in a first time a big break right there for Good Pasture. Really is all the way to the 32. Well, 33 they're going to mark it now. Of course, the Furman commitment, James Elliott. That makes uh, his coach a bit happy. Uh, Ingle Martin, having played at Furman. All right, first and ten, under a minute to go. Laws hands off at the middle to, I think it was Herod. No, it was it Wiseman? It was Wiseman. Yeah, they're getting they're getting some something out of their ground game right now. They're just they just haven't had that that explosive play. CPA is kind of keeping everything boxed in and not really letting the big the big play happen. And of course, you know if you're CPA, you're probably not too worried about it coming in the air. So you just got to really defense the run. Eight in the box right now for the Lions. Hand off at the middle. Long, a lot of room. Still going is Eric Reed. Reed to the 40, the 30, 35, the 20. Eric Reed is tripped up by the last man who had a chance at it. Nice run there by Reed. Explosive up the middle. All the way down to the 15-yard line. That was, and just as I'm saying, you got to keep them boxed in, and they're doing a great job keeping the explosive <laughs> plays. Uh, how about that? I'm sure Coach Martin at Good Pasture wants me to start talking about how inept they are and other things. <laughs> that may be the key. That run right there, there was a, a nice hole, and Reed exploited it and turned on the Jets. He really did. First down in the red zone for Good Pasture at the 15. Laws under center. Hand off. No, he's going to keep it. Broken play, I think. It's a broken play. That's the second time on this drive that Laws was a little bit confusing on the, on the handoff. That time he just went down and lost four yards or so. I tell you what, you, good call because that was a broken play. He was supposed to give it to somebody, just not sure he was supposed to give it to. But I will say this, First quarter, smart, smart play by the young man, and they can watch this on film with him tomorrow and point out because it was a run play and there's linemen downfield getting to the second level blocking linebackers, you can't just throw it away because that's loss of down and, and distance. So that would have been a big one. Well, Coach David Martin has said this week that he's very, very impressed with the phenomenal improvement made by young C.J. Laws in practice. Well, it was interesting reading the story how he called up his middle school coach. And he basically <laughs> said, I got I mean, to play the Laws kid. <laughs> I'm your, glad your season's over. I'm calling him up. So at the end of one, it's 14 nothing CPA, but Good Pasture's knocking on the door right now. Yeah, and this is an important, as we talked about, real important drive for Good Pasture to at least be able to come away with, with some points here and kind of even it out, uh, you know, just come away with something. Obviously, ideally, you want to get the seven points, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're knocking on the door and got the explosive play from Reed, and now they've got to capitalize on it. We'll mention a fun thing if you happen to hear a marching band playing in the background. There is no marching band at CPA, but the Lions have invited Stratford High School's marching band over today as a guest band. This play, a couple, a couple of parents heard them play at a game several years ago. They got a standing ovation here at halftime, and they said, hey, why don't we invite them back to be our guest some night? So Stratford High School's band is here, and they'll be performing at halftime. It's outstanding to see that district rivals uh, getting together and having the bands play together. Well, and it was really uh, the national anthem before the game with – some of the CPA students uh, playing along with the Stratford band was, was, was pretty moving. Here's Laws, hand up at the middle. This time it is Grayson Irwin. Irwin still going. Had a couple different Lions with hands on his back. Couldn't quite get the tackle, so Irwin. Now Irwin's a kid a that. Rare back. Yeah, Ir Ir Irwin's a kid that hasn't gotten a whole lot of carries this year. And, uh, you know, that was a nice, strong run with a pretty good finish right there. He's still in the game right now. Irwin, the junior, kept his legs moving that time and 
Got some of the lost yardage back, back right now, so we got a third and ten. Just outside the 15 for the Cougars. Laws in there is the shortest guy on the on the field. Looks like he's he's a, looks like a little guy in the in the huddle right there. He's hoping to play big right here. Man in motion is Reed. Hand off to Reed. Reed on a sweep. A lot of blockers in front. Reed will be tripped up though. Nice play by Robert Brown that time, the senior linebacker. See, Wiseman had Brown blocked, but, but Robert Brown did such a good job of getting off that and making that play. Uh, Carter was Wiseman, was he was assigned to Robert Brown. He had him for a second, but once Reed got strung out and bounced it, Brown was able to get off his block and make the play. The play had potential, no question, but it resulted in no gain, so it will be fourth and ten now from the 15. It appears as if... A kick attempt will be coming up by Adamopoulos right here, the junior. It'll be about a 32-yarder. No win. Left hash, right-handed, right, right-footed kicker. This should be uh, draw it right in there. Yeah, this should be easy. This is a nice little eight iron. Nick's kick is on the way and is good. Nice kick by Adamopoulos that time. 32-yard field goal. Gets good pass around the board, so they at least they get some points out of that drive. It's 14-3 yeah. now. CPA. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. Back here at Christ Presbyterian Academy. And a good pass around the board. They're lined up for one of those short kicks, it looks like, again. We'll see how that works. Adamopoulos to kick from the 40. 10-21 to go here in the second quarter. It is one of those high, long kicks. Take in and a little bit of room for... Who is that? I couldn't quite see. The number Chase Smith, 22. So... Good run back to about the 37. Not sure about that strategy of kicking the ball short like that. Yeah, I'm not really getting that. I, I guess they feel like they can't kick it deep or they don't want to kick it deep. But, you know, they you're, you're kicking the ball to Chase Smith, and he's fielding in the ball at the 30-yard line. Uh, you got to do a real good job from a coverage standpoint getting off blocks and getting down there because if you give up seven or eight, I mean, you're, if you're CPA, you're already starting the ball past your 35. That's pretty good field position. One first down, you're almost at midfield. First and 10 lines from the 37, 10 15 on the clock in the first half. Mitchell keeps it. Pass out on the flat toward Robert Brown. Brown will get about six. So a good little pass and catch. Yeah, they're wearing out that curl slide concept. They, they like that. They like that. So that time Brown had the flat route. He was responsible for the flat control there. Albert put it right on the button. And as I said earlier, CPA likes to. Go without a huddle most of the time. They'll do that, do that now. It's uh, on the 44. It'll be second down three. And Richard out here on the le- left side with Brown. Paul Adams. Flag goes down. Is it movement? Paul Adams. Adams. Big lineman, 74. Junior. Back up five. Junior lineman, Paul Adams. Left tackle for CPA is a good football player. He's huge, too. <laughs> he's, he's big and he's athletic. He plays on the basketball, basketball. team mm-hmm. here. Great kid, good grades. Uh, if anybody's listening, call Ingle Martin about <laughs> Paul Adams. He's, gonna, a, he's got a chance to be special. A plug. Mitchell in the other flat. This time it's Richard. Richard makes the catch. Nice catch and some moves. Uh, Wiseman had him for a second, and he goes into his own man, does Richard, into Brown. So Wiseman, I think, made the tackle that time. But a good catch. Almost bobbled it at first, then came down with it. Nice run for a first down for CPA to the 46, a good pasture. Yeah, richard has been a difference maker on the perimeter for CPA this year. They lost some really, really good people out Smith. there. Up the middle goes Chase Smith picking his way once again. And uh, he looks like he's not getting much, but you look up and he's got three or four yards. You know, you lose Jackson Cothran 
and Sam Cranford, two fantastic players on the perimeter. And you're, you're looking at a guy, Thomas Richard, who is a rising star. And there he goes in motion, Richard. Hand off up to Smith, will break to the left, and then back inside. He'll be knocked down finally there by Grayson Irwin, but it looks like it's close to another first down. For CPA, the referee says first down. Ball spotted at 36. So the Lions are driving, and they'll keep in that hurry-up approach. Irwin delivered a pretty good blow there. I think he might have knocked himself. Uh, I'm just really impressed with how active good pasture is defensively. Absolutely. Smith's just doing a good job of finding some creases in the run game. 9-10 remaining second quarter. Action stopped here for a moment. Clapping going on by good pasture indicates perhaps a penalty. It's illegal motion. Didn't see on whom. Somebody moved for CPA. They'll back up five and have first down and 15 from the 41 of good pasture. Big crowd here, a great, excited crowd on both sides. Good to see the... Hunter Cross just checking in for Jack Hooper. I think 15. Coach Haywood wanted to have a talk with Jack Hooper. Perhaps so. Hand off this time, Smith again. Smith up the middle. He stumbles and falls forward. Uh, stumbles, he actually was hit, I think, and fell forward to get about five back, it looks like. Well, they marked him way back, actually. His knee must have been down at the 38, so it'll bring up now second down, about 12, it looks like. Jack Hooper back in the game for Hunter Cross. Maybe had a little talk with the coach. He got, a, he got his <laughs> ear full. Hooper will, will have something to remember. Four receivers in motion is Osborne. It's Mitchell rolling slightly to throw. That time almost intercepted there. Stepping in front of it nicely that time was Jalen Moore. Very close to a pick six or a pick at least. Yeah, and they were trying to run what, what you would call the, the, the sprint with the smash concept. So they had a hitch on the outside. They had a corner route behind it. Albert Mitchell tried to burn it into the hitch, and Jalen Moore was sitting on it, and that could have been a pick six. Dangerous. That would have been, if that's 14-10 all of a sudden, a whole different ball game. 8-16 here on the clock. Now it's third and long, about 12 to go. Osborne goes in motion. Mitchell, let's see what he'll roll out to the right. Looking three receivers going down. He's looking long. Got a wide, wide open. open. Osborne makes the catch. Busted coverage right there. Osborne, easy six for CPA. Richard ran the out, and everybody from Good Pasture went to Richard, and Osborne was all alone. Second touchdown catch of the night for the sophomore that time. And the Lions are about to go up by three, well, by 18 points, pending the extra point. Good pass, you're confused or perhaps keyed on Richard, as you say. That Tell time you what, left them open. I wish, they, I wish they did high school football fantasy because if I had J.R. Osborne <laughs> tonight, I'd be pretty happy. A lot of points he's accounted for. It'll be 14, right, in a second. No, actually, yeah, it'll be it'll 15. Be, uh, 21, yeah, two touchdowns and two extra points, right? 15. Isn't that 14? Three extra points. That's right, 15. Yeah. I'm not a math major. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I've become a football <laughs> fantasy junkie. you got to ca- count all the points that time. So 15 points for JR. He's outscored the good pasture side so far, and it's 21 to 3. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Well, Coach David Martin had said before the game this week that his team would be loose. They've been having a lot of fun at practice. We'll see if maybe they're too loose right now. They're they're, they're playing hard, though, Adam. It just looks like their CPA has a little bit more yeah, in the tank. I, and I think right now, I think what what you're seeing is CPA, but it, it's changed a little bit. CPA has more veterans. There's been more guys that have been through this series right now than Good Pasture, who's playing with more younger kids than, than they're used to. Uh, and, of course, you know, <laughs> Their, their quarterback from the last three years is now starting for the Navy midshipmen. Absolutely. Yeah, Keenan, and that's not Keenan, easy to replace, yeah. Keenan, yep, Reynolds, no question. And the eighth grader is a tall order in this kind of a game. Osborne's kick will be taken by Reed at about the five. Reed makes a move. Nice move by Reed. Reed, a lot of room. Reed, one man to beat. It's Osborne. Reed makes a move to the outside. Eric Reed may go. The 30 
to the 20. Can Osborne catch him? He will not. It's a touchdown for Eric Reed. What a run back that time. Wow. Huge play. Eric Reed showing some acceleration, and it was well blocked. Good pasture Christian. Good little middle wedge right there. And Eric Reed had one guy to beat, and it was J.R. Osborne, a good athlete, not just a, your normal kicker. Obviously, he's got two touchdowns tonight. Right. And Eric Reed just outran him to the sideline. A little dip, he dipped inside a bit on Osborne and beat him to the, to the pile on that time. Yeah, I thought Huge Osborne play. had the angle on him. Well, if not, if you can't do it through the air, a good pastor needs to need some big plays. That's one of them right there. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I've got to think, the, uh, I got to think they, they are feeling pretty good about that kick return for a touchdown. No, nothing can nothing can ignite you like a special teams touchdown. No question. 7.50 to go. We saw that last week. Uh, extra point here attempted by Adamopoulos out of the hold of Laws. Kick is up. Well, way off to the left. Is it good? Just sneaks in, looks like. 21-10. to 10. There were a couple of big plays of that in the Pearl Cone CPA game last week. There were a couple of returns. In fact, Pearl Cone had one for a touchdown. So I, I, there'll be some special teams discussions probably at halftime if you're CPA coaches. Yeah, and that was there was nothing fancy about that. Good pasture just ran a middle wedge. And, and the, I mean, the second Reed started getting up the field, you could see there was a hole there, and it was well walled. And it was just, it was just hit it. And then he makes one, one guy miss, and then he's off to the races, and it's him and Osborne. Well, David Martin's teams, of course, are known for discipline and sound blocking in that, in that yeah. case right there. Yeah, and, and, and what character you show. I mean, you go down 21-3, and you come right back and return a kick for a touchdown. So now let's see where we go from here, see if good, pra- good pastor can get the stop they need and get key. another score before halftime. So 7.50 to go. You know, Ingle Martin's thinking, let's get a drive going here. Burn some yeah. clock and get another score. Absolutely. If Absolutely. they can do it. And the run game is really the run game really has looked good, but they've, they've manufactured so many explosive plays in the pass game, you know, you kind of wonder, hey, do we go for the jugular again? Because we feel like we've got something in the pass game. It's worked. They can't stop Albert Mitchell. Do we want to go back to four yards at a time? So it's a question of how you want to manage the clock here at the end of the half. Touchdowns, two by Osborne and one by Richard for the CPA, and then one on that return by Reed and a field goal by Adamopoulos to get us to 21-10. Adamopoulos kicking again down. See to if we get one of these mortar kicks, or we're going to get, or we're going to get him trying to kick it deep. Osborne Smith back there deep. It'll come toward Osborne, I believe. No, it'll be Smith. Chase Smith at the 13. Smith getting outside. Smith has some room. Chase Smith has some room. Smith to pass the 40. Flag goes down, though. He'll be tackled about the 43, but a flag in the area where it could likely be an illegal block. And, I, and Adamopoulos made the play for good pasture Christian, the kicker. Goodness. Knocked Chase Smith out of bounds, but a nice return there by number 22. He's not a little guy. He's got some muscle, does Adamopoulos. A lot of these kickers these days now, they're in the weight room more than they used to yeah. be in the old days. Well, of course, high school kickers often play other spots, too, like Osborne. So. And play other, posi- yeah, play other positions and play, I was going to say, play other sports, other sports, too. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, so they're in the gym. They're doing the conditioning stuff. 7.41 to go. Now CPA will be backed up to its 27. And, and that's a big penalty right there. From the 43 to the 27. Big difference. It'll be Albert Mitchell in the shotgun. Three receivers out. In motion is Presley. I'm surprised Presley hasn't gotten the ball in his hands a little more. It's Smith up the middle. Smith moving his legs forward and tackled there nicely made by number 51. It looked like Bradley Hager, who I think has been injured, but is, uh, is yeah, back. And, and, and Coach Martin for Good Pasture was talking about what a difference having him back has made for the interior of their defense. No question that time. He made the stop. Second down seven. Mitchell rolling. Richard's, or rather, Osborne's open. Osborne makes a little fake move and will drag Good Pastures. Who is that? The first down for CPA on the tackle attempt. It was Jalen Moore. Moore was had Osborne by the jersey and was carrying him, was dragging him. J.R. Osborne just standing, just standing right by himself on the sideline there. Just there's no underneath coverage to get underneath that route when they're sprinting to it. A good burst of speed for Osborne to get up the sideline that time. Mitchell, handoff Smith. Smith goes to his right. Smith back to his cuts inside. Tackle made nicely there by, is it Eric Reed? Yes, Reed on the stop for good pasture. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a five, six-yard carry on first down. Well, you, can, you can make a pretty good living doing that. No question. Good patience. As you said earlier, Adam, and he's got good vision to see, the, to see where the hole is and to 
pick his way through. So it'll be now inside good pasture territory, 643 on the clock. The Lions have it. Second down and six. Richard in motion. It's handoff to Richard on a, on a re- reverse type play. Oh, Richard has a move. And the outside of the 25. Tackle out of bounds. Nice reverse type play and a run by Richard all the way down to the 11. Well, where are they going to mark it? At the 11. Well, they got Richard on that. Like you said, he was in motion. They got him on that, that speed sweep. And he got a nice block out there from Paul Adams, kind of sealed the deal. J.R. Osborne came in, cracked the safety, and Richard had some running room. Under 6.30 to go now, second quarter. Clock stops, official timeout perhaps. What are they doing? It's a timeout actually by Good Pasture. I'll be their first of the And half. that's a good timeout. That's a good timeout. After on their heels. Giving, yeah, on their heels, giving up an explosive play, and it's a chance to just kind of regroup the defense. You've got a lot of guys playing both ways. You probably saw a couple of guys out there a little gassed and said, you know what, let's burn the timeout here and get everybody settled down and try and get this thing down to a field goal attempt. There are some hands on hips right now. We'll take a quick break. Be back with you. Back to Nashville. We're at CPA here. CPA has the ball. First and 10 of that long run by Thomas Richard at the 11 yard line. They're driving up 11 after that big kick return by Reed a moment ago. Lions trying to counter. Mitchell. Handoff. Yes. Chase Smith bounce, bounces outside. Reaches for the pylon. It is Chase Smith. He'll be stopped short. They're going to mark him way back at the three or four, actually. I thought he was going to. Closer to the pile on that time, but it's at the four. So yeah, he, he stepped out of bounds. We don't have the greatest angle here, but uh, nice play by Jalen Moore to force him out of bounds at the three. So it'll be now second down and two. Spotted around the uh, three-and-a-half-yard line. Presley behind Mitchell this time. Handoff, Presley. No, it's actually Smith. I, my bad. Smith bouncing outside. Can he outrun? Reed, No. Good play by Eric Reed there on the pursuit to tackle Smith. That was a bunch of guys chasing Chase, and Reed got him. Yeah, Chase Smith, not a good decision down there. You know, you're at the three-yard line. Not a good decision to try and bounce that because once the corner comes off the wide out, you're done. You've got nowhere to go. You've got to stay inside. If, it, if it's a no gain, it's no gain. So a loss right there. Now it's third down, about six to go. Mitchell, screaming instructions out at Presley, and maybe a timeout called Ingle Martin is out on the field right there. Coach Martin says timeout, that'll be the second of the half taken by CBA. Coach Martin is frustrated about something right there. Well, you know, one of the things that's interesting here is that uh, CPA is staying in their offensive sets. They don't get into a two, you know, they don't have that tight end personnel where they can get into, you know, two, three tight end set with a fullback and a tailback. Um, you know, and, and, and part of that is all the injuries at fullback. And then you've got Robert Brown at tight end who's playing, you know, both ways. And you don't have really a couple of those other big type bodies. I guess you could do it with an offensive line. But, you know, with a couple of offensive linemen. But if you did have that ability, Chase Smith is your ideal back down there to just say, we got the ball at the, you know, we've got the ball at the three-yard line. we got the ball at the four-yard line. Here we come. Yes. Because... CPA is good enough up front inside with Don Mitchell and Adams and Elliott and Jack Hooper um, and, and, and Brown at the center position where they, they can create inertia and they can move you off the line of scrimmage. But that's just not what they, that's just not what they do. Just we'll personnel. Do that right now. There's something like that. It's third and six. If, will Smith get the ball? Well, maybe they throw here. There's receivers three out. Matt, it's Presley in, in motion back into the backfield. What's it going to be? It's going to be... Mitchell keeping, passing the flat, caught, but what a play on defense right there. It was Jay Russell on the catch, I believe. Tackle made beautifully right there by Grayson Irwin. 
Yeah, and Irwin's starting to show up a little bit defensively for good pasture. That was a pretty good play. I thought Mitchell maybe, you know, could have gotten him the ball a little bit earlier, but, boy, that was nice. Yes, good, great, great defensive uh, open field tackle. And so you got he's up fourth down and four. The Lions are going to go for it, it looks like. This is interesting. Yes, Mitchell in the gun. Chase Smith to his left. Receivers. Out, it's going to be Mitchell on a keeper. Mitchell will get in. What a cut. Wow. Great cutback right there. No question. Albert Mitchell calls his own number. Gets in the end zone. And the Lions get that score to counter the big kickoff return and go up 27 to 10. Well, I tell you what, that was a fantastic run. They ran a little read play where Albert Mitchell reads the defensive end. The read made him keep it and just does a nice job of just slicing. And you don't really see too many cutbacks like that. Uh, down at the goal line. Good pastor actually did a pretty good job defensively, but a great run by Mitchell. Against the grain there, yes, Mitchell. Osborne to attempt the PAT. And it will be oh, nearly blocked and just sneaks in the right up right there, so it's good. I heard, Lions. I heard you say. What I say? I heard you say against the grain, and all I can think of is the uh, Dan Patrick show. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the old DP, yep. Very entertaining. So 4.45 to go in the second quarter. 28-10 CPA. Five to go here in the second quarter from Christ Presbyterian Academy. There's a sideline warning called down below. I'm not sure you could see that, but uh, on uh, CPA, the coach is looking quizzically at the referee. Is <laughs> what did we do wrong? A lot of that happened a lot last week at the Pearl Cone game. There were several sideline infractions called against CPA. Now Coach Steve Haywood there is exhorting the guys to get back. Don't want to get in trouble with the uh, line judges there, I suppose. No, and those guys need room to work the sideline, and I I hear what they're saying. You need some room. So the question is, what will they do here? It looks like Osborne is lining up for maybe a short kick. They don't want to give the ball back to Eric Reed, perhaps. After, well, no, he'll take it. It will go, well, mid-range kick to about the 20. Reed takes it, though. He has the ball. Eric Reed makes a move. Reed up the sideline. And pursuit out of bounds that time. Flag goes up. Maybe a late hit, I believe. He's marked out at the 35. And that referee on the side made the call in the area where it might be one of those out-of-bounds hits. Yeah, I don't know what that call is going to be, but this is going to be, if it's not on good pasture, Christian, this is going to be pretty good field position for no them question. to start this drive. And 4.38 left to go in the half. I'm sure they'd like to get some points on the board here. Yes, personal foul called against CPA that time, I guess for a late hit out-of-bounds. It looked like from this angle that it wasn't, it was an inbound hit that uh, took down Reed, but the referee saw it differently and, you're right, Adam. It will be huge up to the 50-yard line. So, my goodness, great starting spot for the Cougars here with 4.38 to go. Plenty of time yeah, for a I, drive. Yeah, and it, if you're good Pastor Christian, that's a great penalty to get, give you that kind of field position because you're probably going to be running the football to try and get a score here. And you've got half the field to go. So here's Laws under center. Eighth grader. Well, the flag thrown. What's the record for penalties in a half? <laughs> Well, we're trying to dot the field with some yellow pajamas here. Can we get Joe Newman on that, please? <laughs> Can we find out how many, what's the, what's the high school, Tennessee high school record for penalties and a half? Because we've got to be getting close. We've, got a, we've had a bunch. Whistled both ways. Started off the game, Good Pasture had a number called against them, and now CPA has been doing their best to even, even the score. Yeah, yeah. So what's the, well, actually that one's against the Lions. Hold on a minute. Oh, my goodness. This is 15 yards against CPA. 
Engel Martin over there here is having a vociferous discussion with the referees. Well, that's that's thirty that's thirty yards for good pasture the easy way. Oh, wow, right there, back to back. That may have been the sideline thing again. I think you might be right. Gracious, that's uh, and you can see the coaches uh, asking the guys to get back, get back. I, well, it's interesting. The same thing happened at Pearl Cone. There were several two more like that. We're going to have first and goal. Here we go, first and ten. On the run that time, has some room. It is Wiseman, but he's tackled down nicely by Smith. Chase Smith with help from Robert Brown. Good play there by Smith. That play had more potential than it ended up Yeah, that was gaining. a nice job. Brown showed up first, and Chase Smith finished it off. Gets the glory there, Smith does, huh? Yeah, but, uh, you know, still, I, you know, and I thought Wiseman had a little more. There might have been a little more in that play than, than he, he got, but he got three. Second and seven at the 32 of CPA. Yeah, and if you're getting a four, you know, if you get that play to a four or five yard gain instead of three, you know, you're staying on schedule offensively. Four minutes to go now in the second quarter. Laws hand off the middle of the fullback. It's taken that time by James Moore, the junior, one of the fullbacks. Gets a couple, maybe. James Elliott showing up on the scene as usual. No question, Elliott is a presence in the middle. On the line, back in comes Sam Landers. Landers dinged up a little bit, but he's playing tonight. He spells Joe Trice here at linebacker. Third and seven, huge play. Huge play. Huge play if you're good pasture. You're probably right outside field goal range unless you want to try what would amount to a 49-yarder. And they've taken a little while to get this play in. See how the – no, we, have, we don't have a play clock here at the, no, it's, it's the Lions going. The home stadium. Laws. Laws has it. Laws in the flat. Open man is Wiseman. Wiseman with a catch. First down and more inside the 20-yard line. What a play. That's the first completion of the night for Laws. Yeah, Laws. Nice throw there off Flag the Flag goes down. Off the play action. We might have a celebration penalty on good pasture. Sorry to cut you off there, Adam. I just saw the flag fly and wanted to note that. Well, we probably shouldn't start talking too much <laughs> because we should just be paying attention well, right now. We should be waiting for flags. There's right? not there's flags. <laughs> Anticipate the, the penalties. Flags, it, flags, they're everywhere. My goodness. It's a you know, John Philip Sousa needs to be playing with all the flags flying around here. And it will be against the Lions. I think it was a, a late hit. Speculation a little bit, but it was the area by the sideline there yeah. where it might have been a hit out of bounds. So on this, this that makes, what, 40 yards on this drive of penalties for yeah. C- against CPA? Yeah. They had the two 15-yarders. Yeah. And, let, and let's let's get back to Laws. First, you know, first completion of the game. Nice job on the play action. Absolutely, yes. Puts it right on the money, and, you know, and, and Wiseman's a, a good target. Good target for him in the flat. Lost good, to the good little run. Safe, a safe pass. Yeah. Uh, not a long Absolutely. toss. Now it's first down and goal. Hand off up the middle. Dumble. Ball's on the, on the ground. Who's got it? It looked like good pasture might have gotten back on that. That was a fumble on the run. James Moore on the carry, and the ball was popped out by a defender. I didn't see who. Yeah, it looks like Grayson Irwin again on the scene. Good pasture, able to, fortunate to be able to fall on that one. Maintain possession. It will be second down goal from the seven. 2.40 to go. Well, this is a huge, Life, obviously huge drive. Yeah, Phil, lifesaver uh, on a recovery from Grayson Irwin right there. See if they can cash in. Laws hand up the middle. Why? A lot of space right there for the fullback. I think that might have been Arrington, was it? It was. Jason Arrington, the senior. Close to, well, he's about to the three, actually. Well, here's a big spot right here. Third down and goal, 2-10, remaining second quarter. Bringing the play in that time. And if you're good pasture, is, you, you want to you play the clock here too. Well, you don't want to give too, too much time for CPA to have time for another drive, you're saying? Yeah. Under two minutes. Third down and goal. Laws under center. Has Arrington behind him in motion. It's a handoff to Arrington. Arrington trying to get somewhere. Can he drag tacklers? No. Lions make the stop. Good play. Landers was involved in that one along with several teammates. Brings up a fourth down and goal now. I'm going to say the pup, Danny Keck's kid, Matt Keck. Sophomore. Good good play in there. In on the play. Timeout called by Good Pasture now, 134. So that brings up a – what do you do here? Do you kick or do you go for it? Uh, You probably need need to try and come away with, you know, with with six points here. But 
you, you know, if you've got a play that you feel really good about from, you know, from the two or three yard line and you've practiced it all week and you feel good and your kids feel good about it, you go for it. If you're not really sure and it hasn't looked good, so really you've got to draw from what you've seen all week at practice. Hey, we really feel good about this. This should work against CPA. Uh, and, you know, we're going to roll the dice with it. If you don't, then you just kick the field goal here. But, you know, a minute and 34 left. Whether they score or not, that's going to be a lot of time sure. for, for, for CPA. And I'll tell you what, that was a nice play by, by Matt Keck because, and, and like you said, there were a whole host of CPA defenders there because Arrington is a tough kid to bring down. Big, big, yes. He's a big kid. You saw the carry before. He's just a tough runner. He's been in the weight room quite a bit, the senior. I wouldn't be surprised to see well, they're going to go for it. Is Eric Reed in the game? It looks like he's not. Grayson Irwin is in the backfield along with Arrington. Wiesman. It's handoff Arrington. Arrington is going to get in. No problem. Wide open. Big hole for Arrington. So they get six. Do good pasture to bring it back to within 28-16 right now. Wow. Huge play. Yeah, that is a huge play. And pending the extra point, we're going to have an 11-point game. And when you think about how CPA has been so explosive offensively and how they seemingly have dominated this game, that special, you come back to that special teams kick return by Eric Reed. Well, the past couple games between these two teams have been lower scoring affairs. This may be in more in the back in the range of high scoring. Uh, several years ago, there were some 42, 41 40, type yeah, games. 43, 32 ball game. Yeah, the, the, the past couple, the, early the season, of course, 14 7, a defensive struggle at Good Pasture. Last year was 22 21. So this one here shapes up to be one of those, if we're on pace at least, for a, a lot more points. Yeah, 28 17 with a minute and 30 to go in the half. And. Based on the way CPA has played aggressively on the offensive side of the football tonight, you could see some more points. <laughs> no taking knees. Either, either way. Yeah, there'll be no uh, running the clock out, I don't think. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Yes, indeed. And speaking of fun things, stay tuned. We'll have the Stratford High School band, guest band, here at CPA. They'll be performing at halftime. It's fun to see those folks in the house at the And we'll get Murphy band. Fair and we'll get Absolutely. Murphy Fair for a couple of minutes. Even better. Talk about a one-man marching band. Murphy Fair does it all. And he'll be up with us. And if you are at another game somewhere else and you're watching us on your iPhone, you've seen an imposter if you think you've seen Murphy Fair. <laughs> He's got uh, elves around. Look like him. Here's a run back. A lot of room for Smith. It is Smith all the way to the 40. Chase Smith, good run back up the middle for CPA. Tackled down. Looks like it was made by Colin Crofton. But a good starting spot for CPA. Yeah, Chase Smith, nice return. He's really looked he's, he's looked fantastic in the return game. He certainly has, and that's something that, uh, of course, uh, big change from last year. CPA had the explosive Vic Wharton back there last year, transferred yeah. to Independence, playing and, in the playoffs. And Winston Williams, a walk-on at Tennessee. senior uh, last year, for a uh, graduate. So uh, this time it's Smith picking up some of that slack. First and 10 from the 40. A minute 23 on the clock. Mitchell back to pass. Mitchell looking all the way toward Richard. Richard bobbles it again, makes the catch at the 50, now to the 45, the 40. Richard goes out of bounds to the 37, 36-yard line. What a nice play there. Well, CPA, you knew where they were going to, especially with that field position, come out aggressively throwing the football. Albert Mitchell threw an absolute dart. And then Richard breaks the tackle of Grayson Irwin, and all of a sudden you have an explosive play. A lot of yak tonight, yard after catch for... Richard. We'll look at we'll get Mitchell's numbers at halftime too. He's got some numbers that they're already getting big. Mitchell again in the gun. Osborne in motion. Mitchell going to throw? Yes, I think. Or he may run it. Just rolling out, looking for a receiver. Nobody there. He'll run and get. Well, that's going to be a, a flag. Fifteen more on the either the horse collar or the out of bounds tackle or take your pick. That time it was committed. It looked like it was uh, Wade Arrington on the uh, tackle out of bounds. Well, that's going to be a big personal foul right there. That's, you know, that's a tough one, and we just continue to have just bucket loads of, of penalties. Both sides, both teams look like it's more like week zero yeah, than yeah. week one of the playoffs. Yeah, really just, you know, and, and I think a lot of that has to be attributed to the rivalry here. I think guys are just so amped up. But here you are, a minute left in the half, 
and we're getting personal fouls still. 106 officially on the clock. That's a big first down for CPA at the 22. Mitchell will roll to his left this time. Quick pass out to who else? Richard to the 10, the 5. Richard very close to the pylon. They're going to mark him out at the 1. Well, I'll tell you what. Right now, good pastor Christian has got to come with, up with a defensive answer for the sprint game and the underneath throws. The flat throws and the hitches have been wide open. No, no answer for Richard right now, or Mitchell for that matter. First down and goal, CPA at the 1. Mitchell under center this time, rare, a rare sight to see. It's a keeper. Not going to get there, though. Nice nice stand. And then who coming from the outside looked like it was Jalen Moore to finish things off. So good job by good pastor to stuff that one. Robert Mitchell on the carry for the Lions. Second and goal coming up. No gain on the Landers goes in, a big fullback. Sam Landers, Landers may be part of the blocking scheme here. Well, they're going to go back to the gun. Smith behind Mitchell. In motion is Osborne. It's a handoff to Smith. Smith will bounce it out again. Can he get to the pylon? He will. It's coming back holding. Okay, flag goes down. Good catch, Adam. Good eyes right there. Somebody gave Chase an unfair advantage right there. Yeah. I don't know who it was on, but I saw it. Clock at 19 seconds, so that's a humongous penalty, obviously, against CPA. Yeah. It'll be backed up how far? Back to the 15. My goodness. So it'll be second down, I think, in goal. It is second down, right? I believe that was a second down play. Yeah. Refer the, well, the, the line says one, but it's two. Yeah, I yeah, think they're about two. to make the change. Yeah. So second down. The clock a big factor now. 19 seconds. Do you go to the end zone here, or do you go for something? No, we're gonna get Lions have one timeout. They want a timeout. I think, timeout. I think they may want to make sure that they've spotted uh, spotted this ball correctly. You made a myth no, word there. Now they're spotted. Looks like they're they're calling the timeout for good pasture, and and I guess you, you got to look at you got to look at CPA. They've got one timeout left. Yes. So you still can you still have the ability to be able to run the football. Depends how aggressive you want to get. You do not want to come away with no points down here. So you don't want to throw a pick, and you don't want to, you don't want to obviously fumble the football. You, you never want to do those sure, things. Sure. But you want to reserve the right to kick the field goal and give yourself 31 and, and put yourself up two touchdowns. Of course, Osborne is known for having a strong leg, the sophomore, so they're certainly well, well within his range. And even a sack wouldn't necessarily put him out of range. You don't want to throw, it, throw it, a pick. That's the main thing, right? Take a sack yep. if you have to. Osborne attempted a 60-yarder earlier in the season here at CPA's home field. It was about 10 yards short, but he's got a strong leg. Yeah. So you're, you're well within field goal range with a kid that's really been money, and your unit's been excellent all year. You've got the timeout. You've got second down, so you can still, you can, you still have the ability to be able to try and pop a draw if you don't feel good about throwing the ball. Here's Mitchell. Looking to throw in zone. Who else? It's J.R. Osborne, the sophomore, with his third touchdown catch of the night. Wow. I'd say he's having a night. Unbelievable. Osborne now counting for 21 points. And my fantasy, my fantasy points continue. <laughs> Goodness, 22 upcoming if he makes the PAT. What a throw by Mitchell banging the slant in there Quickly. to Osborne. Well, no hesitation there. It was, Os- it was Osborne on the catch and the Mitchell on the throw. 15-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, just just decisive and right on the money. And, and what you've got to do with that slant pass down there is put it on the body. Nice they job. did. No chance for good passer on that one. Here is the kick. Oh, nearly blocked again, but it's good. Yeah, good passer, even on plays like that, will continue to play hard because that's how, that's how they're built. Well, gigantic uh, turn of events right there for CB to go back up 
This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. At this. Back way to here at CPA. The Lions go up 35-17 on that touchdown pass from Mitchell to Osborne. 14 seconds to go. Stay tuned with us at halftime. A couple special treats. We have Murphy Fair with us up here in the booth. Murphy will give us some insights. And then we'll have a special Stratford band. It's an onside kick taken. It's loose. Recovered, I think, by good pasture. Looked like Paul Herkeman fell on it there. Let me get that right. It's Herkenhan. I apologize to Paul. It's a... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure Trick about play that. play there. I'm, I'm not sure about that because I don't know what you gain by oh, even recovering that. Okay, you've got, you Nine do have the one now. score, but your risk-reward on that is not great because now you're going to give good pasture a chance for one play. CB did that against Lipscomb early in the season and converted on, on an onside kick at a, at a time like that that when you didn't expect it. But this time, it's inside Lion territory, so perhaps a play or two. Nine seconds to go for good pasture. We'll see. They're lined up in kind of a standard formation, though. It's going to be a handoff. Well, all right. It's Wiseman, I think, looking for some room. Clock's going to run here. Yeah, but there, half time. Well, there's David Martin saying, I'm not falling into the trap, <laughs> right? No, no <laughs> gave, home run you try gave, there. You gave me nine seconds, but I got an eighth grader at quarterback. I'm not throwing <laughs> this baby up for grabs. So the first half will end here from CPA with a score of 35-17. Lions lead back and forth battle that time. A couple of big plays, including the run back by Eric Reed on the touchdown pass, but or rather the uh, kickoff return. But it's three touchdown passes to J.R. Osborne from Albert Mitchell and one to Richard, making the difference for CPA. CPA's been explosive on offense tonight. I will. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. Time to put the hats on and go get some work done. They're all going to look to make a statement early. We are back. Halftime score at CPA. The Lions then 35 17 CPA over Good Pasture. Uh, with us here at halftime, we grabbed Murphy Fair from murphyfair.com, as well as many other things, uh, talking Tennessee. Murphy, thanks for joining us at halftime always today. Good, always good to be around you, Adam. You're doing a great job yeah. for Tennessee high school football as well. So, well, uh, well I, pr- I appreciate that, and, and we're trying. Why this game tonight? I had a hard time, really hard time, trying to figure out where to go tonight. I told somebody the other day if the helicopter hadn't been in the shop, I'd probably be in Trenton or in uh, Oak Ridge, a couple of really great games. But each of those three hours away from my house, so I decided to try and zero in on one in the mid-state. And this was a three-point game 12 weeks ago, 11 right. weeks ago. Right. And uh, obviously a far cry from what it was in week zero. But I thought it had a chance to be a pretty close ball game. Have you fe- have you uh, checked to see what's going on uh out there, Trenton Peabody and, and Oak Ridge, right? Correct, and I have I, I did not see scores on either one of those. I'm sure they're out there, but uh, I'm sure they're out there on Ball Frog. In intriguing situations, nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let me uh, let me talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are going on here in the state. Obviously, we've got our championship run, right? Um, but I understand that you are a little bit involved with uh, a Tennessee All Star Game, East West All Star Game. Uh, do we have a date for the game? Yes, it's Saturday, December 8th, so it'll be exactly one week after the 2A, 4A, and 6A championships at Tennessee Tech in Cookville. Uh, they have they have wanted the game for the last three or four years, but Carson Newman has, uh, has been such an incredibly great host uh, for the Tennessee Athletic Coaching Association to have that game up there. But Cookville just would not say no, and it's not, not only Tennessee Tech – but it's the Chamber of Commerce. It's their newly formed sports council. Everybody in Cookville, just like for the Blue Cross Bowl, is bending over backwards. They're putting on a banquet 
at their cost on Friday night for the players and their parents. Yeah. Uh, and we just couldn't say no to Cookville. Yeah, Cookville's been fantastic for us at Play on Sports and the, and the TSSAA now obviously getting involved with TACA. Right. Uh, and it, th- that's really fantastic. Um, what, are you, uh, what are you seeing out here from this game tonight? Kind of what you expected? I, I think so. Like I said, I thought it might be a little bit closer. But uh, CPA is, uh, uh, I think, since the third or fourth week of the season, has, uh, has shown maybe to be a team of destiny, I think. Uh, obviously, we've got the likes of Alcoa and CAK and, and maybe South Gibson and another one maybe out of West Tennessee. But uh, uh, th- this team just seems to be so machine-like out there and so well-coached and, and have such a great uh, – chemistry about them that uh, they're going to be very hard for anybody to deal with I yeah think. and and Ingle martin is 22 and 2 as a as a head football coach here at cpa with two losses coming by three points of course last year to mylan at mylan right uh by a bucket in the uh in the state semifinals so they never got to uh play cak but certainly a matchup of cpa cak or alcoa uh, you know, would would really be an intriguing matchup for a 3A final. Of course, there's a lot of football to be played in 3A. Uh, how about in 6A? Uh, you know, there was an interesting article in the in the DNJ in Murfreesboro today. I, I can't wait to see Tom Krieger and tell him he really went out on a limb. Uh, he picked three teams on the east and three on the west. And and uh, if if my five year old grandson knew where those teams were, that's who he would have picked. Too. <laughs> uh, on the east, he's got uh, Maryville, Siegel, and Dobbins Bennett. Right. And on the west, he's got Brentwood, Mount Juliet, and Whitehaven. Yeah. That's kind of a no brainer. So so uh, on his on his picks, I think he's got no losses, or maybe there's uh, one there's one loss, right? Because I, I, I know Siegel, Maryville, and Dobbins Bennett are all ten and zero, right? Uh, Whitehaven. That- that would be correct in Whitehaven as, well. as yeah. well. And then Brentwood and Mount Juliet, each with just one loss right, themselves. Right. So uh, I think he's safe for at least a couple of weeks. We'll see when some of them start meeting in the quarters or semis how it how it shakes out. But I, I, I do think those six teams and and five of the, five of those six were teams that I picked uh, uh, back in May uh, or June before I went to press with a magazine. So I think he's pretty safe with those bets. Don't go anywhere without the 25th anniversary <laughs> edition of Tennessee high school football, Murphy fair, 2012. I bring that to all our, all our games. Appreciate all the things that you do for Tennessee high school football, Tennessee high school athletics. Great to see you. Thank thanks you, for Adam. The, thanks for the visit. I, I, I noticed you got your new cannon. You're taking yeah. some, taking yeah. some action Making shots. Making a few shots of underclassmen for next year's magazine, you know. So, uh, Excellent. Hey, Play On does such a great job, too, and I'm so glad that so many schools are buying in to your message because it's a great way for uh, uh, kids to showcase themselves to, to – to college coaches, to family members that maybe live a thousand miles away, all they got to do is go online and watch Johnny's game from last night. It's, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's been a fun to be a part of it, and you know when you're in a great state like the state of Tennessee, and and like you said, more people are kind of buying into the concept right. because you know it's not it's it's something new. You know the right. schools really don't have it in there, um, but we're going to listen to the Stratford band. Appreciate you being Thank with you. us. Murphy Fair, murphyfair.com.
Give it up for the Spartanettes. The ladies, ladies look so lovely. together, CPA and Strapper. Let's keep that connection going. We've shown you our drilling. You've heard our concert sound. Now, the band is going to block band to shake it for you. for you see
Thank you. We'd like to give you our Spartan salute. We appreciate you. We show our gratitude to CPA for showing us so much love. Thank you. And we hope that continue this lovely friendship we have. Thank you so much, CPA. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Daniel Hayes calling out Coach Johnny Croft and the Spartan Marching Band! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's guest band, the Stratford Spartans, are sponsored this evening by Gold Turner Group Architects, Planners and Interiors, Star Physical Therapy, and the law firm of Smith, Cashin, and Orr. Transportation provided by Shuttle Transportation. Thank you again for our band sponsors, and thank you, Spartans! One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. Time to put the hats on and go get some work done. So they're all going to look to make a statement early. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. Captain Emily Orr and the CPA Lions dance team. CPA fans, please make your plans to watch the CPA Quiz Bowl team in action Sunday night at 9 p.m. on WNAB Channel 14. The quiz team matches knowledge and wits with Oakland High School. Team members are Captain Mary Monroe, Archie Troxel, Will Gilman, and Lydia Beal. That's the CPA Quiz Bowl team in action Sunday night at 9 p.m. on WNAB Channel 14. Don't know how you do what you do. CPA high school students in the house tailgate competition. Finishing in fourth place, McKinnon. Third place, Barclay. Second place, Sutherland. 
And your winner in first place for the house tailgating competition, Wallace. Hey! Woohoo! Wallace! We thank you all parents and students for your participation. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot. But now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. They're all going to look to make a statement early. from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot. But now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. They're all going to look to make a statement early. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee here at CPA for the CPA hosting Good Pasture, 2C Holt hosting a 7 seed halftime, almost second half action about to start, 35-17, the Lions lead the Cougars right now, and uh, it's Phil Newman here along with Adam Hollis and Bobby Brooks and Jimmy Gilmartin with you on this PlayOnSports.com playoff game of the week, first round action here in Tennessee. Looking at some of the stats from the first half, Adam, it looks as if... Uh, Really, domination offensively for CPA with yeah three hundred and forty one yeah three hundred yeah three hundred and forty one total yards and you know uh, just tough sledding for good pastor Christian right now um, offensively with you know when you don't have that dual threat the ability to hurt somebody in the air uh, and you're playing a team that's ex- as explosive as CPA it's tough passing one for two good pastor on the other hand twelve of sixteen. Albert Mitchell, so quite a huge difference in the passing game and passing yards being 253 yeah. for Mitchell and 12 on the one pass from C.J. Laws. And Albert Mitchell had a fantastic first half, four touchdown passes and one rushing. So uh, that's yeoman's work, and that's how you get 35. Biggest play on the, on the stat sheet, of course, is that kickoff return Eric Reed had for good pasture to give them a touchdown on the, on the return. Yeah, and penalties. Then, well, go, yeah, ahead. Go, go ahead. Yeah, a good pasture just kept battling back and, and you know, they got down 14 nothing early, but just, you know, made it 14 3 and just kind of kept clawing away. And, you know, if they don't give up the, you know, the, the, the personal foul and then the letting CPA go in and score, of course, the gutsy call earlier. Uh, it, you know, uh, by going for it on fourth down by Engel Martin turns out to be seven points. So, uh, gutsy call. No question. And penalties, we have uh, 14 flags thrown 
10 against CPA for 110 yards, and about 43 of those were on that one drive for yeah. Good Pasture when they scored the touchdown. And then uh, it's 10 for 110, and then Good Pasture 4 for 42. So penalty plagued first half in yeah. lots of ways. Yeah, and, and in a lot of ways, the penalties uh, for Good Pasture led to the early CPA scores. True. And then the penalties, you know, on the other way led to the Good Pasture score. So, so both teams scored off penalties, if you will. Yeah. And the first down's 15 to Lions, 8 for Good Pasture. Of course, several of those first downs are on penalties. So that's pretty much the story. It's, it's what you'd expect. Now, the game's certainly far from over. I mean, 35-17, far from insurmountable for Good Pasture. You've got to get something going offensively, though. You can't rely on just kickoff returns, right? Yeah, and, and you know, one of the things that uh, Good Pasture is no stranger to is facing adversity and coming back. No question. Uh, they wouldn't even be playing tonight if they weren't a resilient football team uh, led by a resilient and very good football coach in Coach Martin. And so you, they're the kind of team that you can't count out. Now, there are a lot of teams, you know, across this state and across other states. You're down 35-17, and you really haven't been able to stop the opponent. Uh, it's tough to get up for, but good pasture, Christian. You just always have a feeling, uh, you know, it's almost you've got to, you've got to see blood and you can't hear breath anymore until you know they're done. <laughs> That's right. Well, speaking of done, the team that isn't done tonight will go on to play the winner of Westmoreland York Institute tonight, the 3-6 and six game in this quadrant. So that would be good. That would be CPA hosting if they win and good pasture going on the road if they were to come back in this game. And yeah, and I'll be interested. Yeah, and I'll be interested to see what happens in that Smith County Fairview game. The four or five game uh, will be an interesting outcome, and we will try and get you some of those scores as they become available later in the half. Absolutely. And then the other the other game in this quadrant, uh, the Cheatham County, number one, 10 and 0 hosting Grundy County. And that's a, that's where uh, the Lions, should, should they keep, keep winning, would have to go to Cheatham County in that game and unless they're upset so here we go second half action about to begin it'll be good pasture to re- receive osborne to kick and it is one of those very short squibby type well up in the air fumble though ball is loose on the ground who's going to get it it's still loose i think good pasture well no cpa well what a huge play out of the gate lions kick that short kick and it's, it's fumbled and Recovered by CPA. They clearly like something that they saw on film, and they just they just kind of pooched that ball. Unfortunately, Bailey Baker was not able to hold on for good pasture. That's a bad that's a bad break. That's a freshman right there, Baker on the on the play. Unfortunately, Coach experience Mar- perhaps. Yeah, Coach Martin's playing with a lot of youth, a lot of young guys, and Mitchell not one of them for CPA. The senior quarterback hands off to Chase Smith at the middle. Smith. Not much room. The pile is moving sideways. It might be a yard gain. So good uh, defensive stop right there for the interior line of Good Pasture. Good Pasture has been stout on that inside run really since the first drive. Uh, that play is uh, inside run to Chase Smith has been well defensed by the Good Pasture Christian defense. Well, as much hope as Good Pasture might have had at halftime, a score here by CPA certainly would have to be a demoralizer out of the gate in the second half. Just underway, 11, 18 remaining. Mitchell, handoff on the sweep. And it's going to be Gilman carrying the ball down past the 30. Still going as Gilman. He bounces out to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. And it is a touchdown. Wow, they got what Will. Go- they got Godwin, Will. Go- I said Gilman. Yeah, Godwin. they got Godwin on the speed sweep. That's wow. the second big play they got for the speed sweep. They got Richard earlier in the first half. On that big play. Same play. Different and then they get runner. it again. Let me get that right. Will Godwin, number 18. What a run. Nice play there. Got the blocking, as, as we said. And then he bounced it out and used his speed. He got all the way to the end zone. So the Lions go up 41 17. Yeah, and I, I've got to get Godwin right because I, co- I, co- I coached at Dartmouth with his cousin, is that Drew right? DiGiacinto. We called him Gigantor. More, <laughs> more on that later. Wow. Adam Hollis, all kinds of connections in the football yeah. world. They go deep. I got a special place in my heart for Will Godwin. <laughs> Osborne on to attempt the PAT. High snap brought down by Manuel. Kick is on the way and good. So the Lions go up six touchdowns. Am I doing the math on that right? 42. Your, your fantasy player there, Osborne, has, I think, 23 now. They've just been so explosive offensively tonight. And I think this is the kind of game 
uh, you know, that CPA as, as, you know, a two seed and a team that's coming in 10 and 0 and obviously heavily favored to make it deep into the playoffs by anybody you talk to. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of game that's actually a good first round game for them because you can't sleepwalk through good pastor Christian. They're too good. Good You've got to practice and you've got to come ready to play. And obviously coach Martin had him ready to go tonight. Coach Eagle Martin, earlier today, I talked to him, and he said that he thought they approached this game as if they're playing an eight-win team because of the suspensions and the adversity the good pastor had. They might easily have been an eight-and-two team rather than five-and-five. Five. So certainly, as you say, I think Coach Eagle Martin had his team prepared, and they weren't looking past good pasture in the least. And they've made, you know, obviously the kick return for a touchdown aside by Eric Reed for good pasture. CPA has been very consistent on both sides of the football and in the kicking game, and now they've been opportunistic with a, the with a turnover, and they turn it into quick points. Osborne lined up, but could be another one of those poochie type I kicks. Call, we'll I, see. Call, I call them mortar kicks. That one's a little bit longer, down to about the 20. Taken. A little bit of room right there up past the 35. Goes, I think that might have been Irwin, was it? Yes, Grayson Irwin on the, re- on the return. And the tackle was made that time by... I lost it on 48. Looked like it was Spencer Woods in on the tackle. Woods. So that's a good, a good starting spot for good pass. We'll see if, they, if uh, their young quarterback, C.J. Laws, will throw some more or will they keep on the ground? Well, I think you've, you've, you've still got a lot of time left in this football game, so you really have to stick with what you're good at. But then you've got to tighten up the, you've got to tighten up the, the reins on defense a little bit and start keeping CPA in check. Up the middle of the handoff. A lot of room. That time for Wiseman. Wiseman all the way into the secondary to midfield and just passed it. Good run right there by Wiseman. Carter Wiseman, the junior. And just past midfield, first and 10. Good pasture. 10.49 to go here in the second half, or the third quarter, rather. An injured player down. Looks like that might be Godwin. Yeah, that is Godwin. And that was a nice play by uh, Xander Isaacs there on that tackle, but Carter Wiseman has been very impressive tonight offensively. Xander Isaacs is a player who's definitely come on strong in the past, well, two years. This year, especially the junior. Played a little bit last year, but but, uh, Isaacs has really had a good season. A lot of big plays for him. One game, I think, for CPA, he had uh, an interception and a touchdown and some big tackles. So he's definitely made his presence felt in the secondary for the Lions. We certainly hope Godwin's okay right now as he's down being attended to by several trainers and docs. It's good to see him up. So here we are, third quarter, 10.49 on the clock. It'll be first and 10. Good pasture on the strong run that time by Carter Wiseman. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Back here at Christ Presbyterian, that's uh, Godwin going off under his own power. Good sign if you're a CPA. Yeah. Fan now it's first and ten. Cougars got to get something going right now. They trail big, 42-17. Laws, handoff. Irwin, Irwin slips. I think it goes down for about a two- or three-yard gain. Keck was there, on the, again, on the tackle, 44, the sophomore for CPA. And if you're the Cougars, you can still continue to do what you do offensively. It doesn't mean you've got to start throwing it all over the parking lot, but what it does mean is you got to start getting in and out of the huddle a little bit faster so you can, you can have more plays. They're not necessarily a fast uh, uh, offensive team at this point. Yeah, two yeah. totally different styles of offense we're seeing here tonight. Whistle blows. Not, not, not a come-from-behind team so much if you're good pasture. Right, in right. In nature. 10.09, clock stops, penalty flag thrown. That's a familiar sight tonight. It's going to be procedure against the Cougars. That'll be their fifth penalty of the game. And CPA has, what do we say? I think it was 10 against the Lions in the first half. It was. So now 15 total flags thrown. 152 total yards and penalties in the first half. That's a bunch. That is that's a good running, that's a good game for uh, Chris Johnson these days, if you, if you like. <laughs> that's a great game. <laughs> well, CJ, yes. Yeah. Speaking of fantasy points. There you go. Under 10 minutes to go here. Laws, inside handoff, up the middle. Big hit there by somebody on the interior line. Didn't see who, but I think it might have been 
I think that was going to be Joe. That was Sam Landers. Landers. Uh, also, I think Robert Brown was in that pile as well. I love the way Sam Landers competes. He's just one of those kids that just brings his lunch pail and hard hat to work every day. And you know, playing playing hurt tonight. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure by all accounts, he is not 100 percent, but was going to give it a go because it was just too big a game to sit out. No, no question for the senior. And in motion, it's Laws keeping. Laws will maybe throw. No, he'll run. He'll get decked by James Elliott. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to high school football. Yeah. Wow. And, and I thought Laws made a pretty good decision there. He didn't like what he saw, so he was going to tuck it and run. Pretty good play by James Elliott. Wow. And but, but the, again, I've been impressed with Laws because he just won't. He's not going to throw it up for grabs, which is a good sign. You can build from that. Sure. Big, huge upside, obviously, for an eighth grader to be playing. At all, and Coach David Martin likes what he sees in C.J. Laws. That time, I don't think Laws liked what he saw in the much bigger James Elliott. Wiseman back to punt about his 40-yard line. It'll be turning over. Nice punt. Osborne is back there fair catching inside the 10, about the 7. So okay. a good punt for Wiseman. Now we know why Coach Martin liked his punter so much. That was uh, Beautiful. a pretty pretty looking pretty looking ball down there and now good pastures got to come away with a pretty good defensive stop here and get get the ball back 8:30 to go third quarter this could be the well really the game may, may be out of reach right now but certainly if CPA were to drive down and score more it would be tough for good pasture little constant sorrow being played on the PA system here at CPA and uh, what a great atmosphere for a high school football game. I mean, just driving in, seeing all the tailgating and the, the barbecue and how excited people were. And, and it wasn't just CPA fans either. There was a pretty good contingent of good pasture Christian Cougars out there in the parking, la- parking area as well. Just a great atmosphere. Good pasture travels very well, yes. Mitchell, handoff. It's Chase Smith. Smith has room. Smith will bust it up. Smith has lost room. Now Chase Smith might go. Smith, that's going to be holding. It wasn't called. Smith will score. Was there a flag thrown? No. Smith goes 93 yards. The touchdown. I saw a hold in front of us here by Osborne, but the referee didn't see it. Good Back for CPA. Breaker. Backbreaker, no question. Smith who already came into the game with nearly 1,200 yards rushing this season, adds to that total. Huge play. That's, uh, I've got to think that's the longest run of Chase Smith's career. Did a nice little job of hesitating right here and decreasing the angle that the safety had and then accelerating again. Chase Smith. Wow. Another one of those CPA veterans that have played a lot of football. Senior. Outstanding. Osborne once again to attempt. Kick is the same place on the right side. He likes that right side of the goalpost. It's good. 49-17. Let's calculate Osborne's points. Seven extra points, right? Three touchdowns. That's 18. 25. Good fantasy night. Wow. Good fantasy night. That's a strong number. And, and right now you just see CPA kind of asserting their will a little bit on this football game. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with the youth of Good Pastor Christian and the experience of CPA. Lions course ranked number two in the state right behind Alcoa and uh, CAK right behind them. Alcoa and CAK had that big game last week that was won 31-28 by Barnburner. Alcoa. Barnburner out east. Amazing. Yeah, they're, they're in, in the mix, of course, to may, maybe make it to Cookville. One of those two teams could likely end up there, and CPA has a chance this year to make it to make it that far after ending in the semifinals last year. Yeah, they're impressive, impressive bunch from, from top to bottom. And, you know, the thing that you have to like is really just since the opening kick tonight, you know, you got to like if you're a CPA fan is since the opening kick tonight, the Lions really have been a smooth, steady ship. And offensively, this is probably their, 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 their finest hour. No, I don't think no they've question. played a better game offensively all year. No question. We're still early in the third quarter, relatively speaking. Here comes the kick, taken by Osborne all the way to long, kick down inside the five. Picked up by Irwin that time. Nice tackle breaking there by Irwin, but he'll be dragged down short of the 20. Yeah, Max Presley was down there unblocked and just couldn't, uh, just couldn't make the play. 
It's a tough running that time by Earl, but all he has to show for it is not is the 19 yard line. So first, I'm trying to see if I if we have the record, if I can find the longest run for CPA in our stats or anywhere here. But uh, I don't know if we have that. Anyway, that was 93 yards, I believe, for Smith that time. Huge. Huge, I, huge run. I happened to be looking right down at, at the run when he ran past Osborne. Osborne grabbed the jersey of a defender. Referee didn't see it, so that's fortunate if you were uh, on the Lions' side. Laws, handoff. It is Wiseman. Yes, Wiseman has lots of room. Wiseman will cut it back. Nice cutback on Isaacs. Wiseman still going. Dragged down finally at the 34 by, who is that, number 10 for CPA is Whitaker. Is that right? Maybe the number, numbers all jumbled on his jersey. Anyway, nice run by Carter Wiseman right there to break it in, then outside and bounce it down the sideline. First and 10 Cougars at the 35 of CPA. That was a nice run, and, and you know, Wiseman still competing. And just a real good, real good little stutter step right down here to really turn that into a bigger play than, than it probably could have been. No question. He was just some dance moves there on the sideline. So good pass here. Not giving up. No question. You said it that early, Adam. They don't give up ever. Same play, basically. It's Wiseman this time. He's bottled up. Nice play. Who was that CPA? Someone on the line getting up. Well, who else? Elliott. Elliott was the first man to stuff that one up. If you don't for, for an offensive lineman. No question. 6.50 to go here in the third. Handoff. That looked it's awkward. Wiseman again. It didn't look like a good play out of the gate, and it wasn't. Yeah. Three or three uh, lines, including Chase Smith down there. I keep seeing those yellow shoes. I want to line I think yeah. another flag has been thrown. Those neon yellow shoes look like flags. But it's another loss. This time it'll bring up third and about 12. Yeah, tough sledding right now if you're the Cougars because you've got to throw the football here. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Well, or you're, you're, you feel like you're going to go for it on fourth down, in which yeah. case you, you, might, you might run it here. Concede. Um, but you really, to climb back in this game and have any hope of, of getting back in this game, uh, I think it's, it's pretty obvious you've got to start throwing the football a little bit here. Laws under center. It will be a run. It's the Arrington, the fullback, will get about two. So that, that one there, they may have said, we're not going not gonna to risk it. Yeah. No pass attempt. Now fourth down. It's certainly you're way, way past four down territory. I mean, you got to go for it, you would think, mm -hmm. unless you're saying, well, we're just going to punt and right. concede. Yeah, and I don't think it's too that, early for that. Yeah, that it is too early for it. Coach Martin at Good Pastures, he's probably had his share of games that have looked ugly like this before and it probably come back and won a few of them. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. No question. Well, here's what happened here. We, we missed... Was there a penalty? I gotta say we missed. A, must have been. Must have been a penalty against CPA. Of course, we should have anticipated that. Was that? They, did they call personal foul on Coach Engel Martin? Maybe, maybe so. Into I being first they, and ten. I think. I think Coach Engel Martin got a little too animated for That's the side judge. There's been several altercations, if you will, between Coach Martin. Yeah. And the side judge. Here's a handoff to Arrington. Arrington, a lot of room. Arrington down close to another first down for Good Pasture. I think we're going to have first and goal inside the 10. That was Jason Arrington with the uh, Arrington brothers, the senior. Brother Wade is a junior. Well, another first down, so now it'll be first and goal. So suddenly CPA, a rather good pasture, is uh, marching downfield. Number 74, Jedediah Vivio. Oh, Jedediah Vivio, yep. yeah. He's big, a big guy. A really big guy, really good looking football player. I've watched him the last couple of plays. Very active. Two time all district. Same there, play. He is, there he is on the down block that springs Arrington right there. Vivio. He, Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say all district in 2011, and there was some question as to if he was going to be able to go tonight. That's right. And, and uh, clearly he, he was able to, and he's doing a nice job up front, popping Arrington right there. One of the seniors I heard interviewed on, Coach David Martin, on the Good Pasture Radio Network this week, they interviewed uh, Jed Adai, a well-spoken young man. Some of his teammates talked about their senior memories of playing for Good Pasture, and right. one thing he mentioned was being in the weight room a lot. And yeah. obviously he's, it's paid off. He's a strong Fantastic looking, lineman. fantastic looking offensive line. Second goal, Arrington again. This time heading for the goal line. Is he in? He is. Touchdown for Jason Arrington, the senior. And Good Pasture gets 23 now on the board. That was just a, that was a feed the wolf kind of kind of situation there. I think they were going to give it to Arrington until it was until it was finalized. And I'll tell you what, that kid 
is a good fullback and perfect for what they love to do. No he, question. He fits right in. So Adamopoulos back on the field for the PAT attempt. Well, it's, it's a still a big lead for CPA, but a uh, long way to go. 431 in the third. Kick is up, and it's good. So 49-24, Lions still lead, but good pasture. Drove down and scored with some authority right there. A long way to go here in this game. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash S. Accurate CPA, the kickoff taken out of bounds. That time by Adamopoulos. It'll be a... Penalty flag thrown. We were talking, Adam, in the break, just about uh, the difference in this game between this game and the first one this season. 14-7 defensive struggle at good pasture. This one obviously a track meet. <laughs> yeah. And big difference, big plays, and lots of chunks of yardage. Yeah. Big and you, passes. And you sit there and you go, okay, well, really, you know, what's changed? Uh, but, you know, just tonight, CPA has just gotten so many explosive plays. And I don't know if that was a question of good pasture just didn't uh, you know, just didn't commit to, you know, thinking that that was going to be something CPA was going to do if they thought it was just going to be a kind of grinded out type of run game that CPA was going to bring to the table and they were kind of more prepared or more thinking that. Um, but certainly CPA has managed to get those explosive plays and, and good pastures scored 24 of their own after only scoring seven in the opener, although they did have the ball down at the 10 mm -hmm. towards the end of that game. I mean, that's how that's close true, that true. opener was. Yes, indeed. And, and CPA's offense really be, began clicking after that game. The Lions have put a lot of points on the board since then, so maybe that was them finding their way a little bit in the first game. And But this game certainly we're on, on pace for, well, it's a big score already, doesn't it? The re-kick taken five yards back. Adamopoulos puts his leg into it. Nice kick down about the 10. It's Smith. Chase Smith getting outside. Smith will get up and get hit hard. At the 35. Flags go up. That will be another hanky. And 15. So the Lions will take possession about the 50 or so. You, see, you know, I tell you what, when these two teams hook it up, yeah, I, I tell you what, book my reservation right now for the opener next year. Wow, yes. Uh, although Good Pasture may be moving. They, it looks uh, like they're going to, to uh, 2A. 2A. Right, right. But I, I've got to think, oh, boy, I hope these two, t t two schools figure out a way keep it. to keep this rivalry going. It's, it's, been such, a, a good it's such a good football game. 12-8 is the history the, uh, in the series. Good Pasture leads 12 games to 8. The Lions have won the past three, and this one looks like it may be on pace for number four, and that would be four victories for Ingle Martin. No, good field position we'll here see. again, and I, I've got to think that we're going to see the football on the ground quite a bit here. 4.21 to go in the third. Lions will have it. Mitchell roll out and pass to Richard, and the flat Richard goes out of bounds. About an eight-yard gain there for Thomas Richard. One mistake there, maybe not Another staying flag. in bounds. Flag Another is down, flag. doesn't matter. The clock will stop anyway. <laughs> It's time for the every other play infraction show. Chop block called against CPA that time. Of course, we don't know the number. We don't hit, get that in high school football at this point anyway. That's going to be a huge one, though. Yeah, that's a big one. That will be is that fifth, that's a, a spot foul, I think. It goes all the way back to the 33. So that will bring up now. It'll be first down and a million, uh, about 18 or 19 yards. First down to Maryland Farms to go. Uh, that's not that's not, not not that reference. Actually, that 43, <laughs> 40, it is forever. 
It's first and 23, I should say, not, not 18. Mitchell handoff. And that is, I think, Presley. No, it was Smith. They look a lot alike. Another flag. Fans want one. There's an extra hit there made on uh, Jack Hooper by, I didn't see who was it for good pasture. I think it was Arrington, and I think those Maybe two. Arrington. I think that's been, a, I think that's Hooper and Arrington have been mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> it's a matter of time uh, tonight. Uh, Arrington was lucky because he was the second guy, but Hooper got him first. <laughs> yeah, Jack Hooper's a big boy. And Arrington, certainly no, no small fry himself. He's a strong young man. Uh, equipment issue right here looks like for Arrington going to get his uh, chin strap. Maybe maybe Hooper lo- loosened Arrington's chin strap right there. A little love tap on the chin. Who knows? So, so now it's second in a million. Clock running again at 3.30. All right, second down and I-65 to go. Mitchell going to pass it a long way up in the air for Richard. Running under it. Oh, my goodness, what a catch. Flag goes down. Richard's going to score. Is it interference against offense or defense is the question. Wow. I I think it's going to be offensive pass. I think it's going to be defensive pass interference, and this play is going to stand. Three uh, three defenders right there. Richard Unbelievable. What a catch. And Mitchell threw it at a place where Richard could run underneath it. The defenders were there for good pasture, but, man, Richard. Athletic play right there. Over 50, now 55 points on the board for the Lions. And back out to, well, here's the, well, here's the referee making the call. Touchdown, it will be, you're right, Adam, it was defensive pass interference there. It's incredible. Amazing. That it's was incredible. I, did, I said they were going to come out and run the football, and they just threw a post for a touchdown. Well, good grief. They must have seen something in that one that was, uh, well, that's Richard's second touchdown, I think, of the night. He has two. Osborne has three. Mitchell has one on a keeper. So PAT attempt number eight coming up for J.R. Osborne, the sophomore. Oh, high snap. Kick down. This one is going to be short. It was uh, disrupted. Bad, uh, really, really high yeah. snap. So. Good pasture, good penetration up front. Nice play by good pasture to get in, in on that one. So Osborne denied his eighth PAT. He'll stick, be stuck on 25 fantasy points. But the Lions have 55. 316 to go here in the third. Question now, how many more points will be scored? We'll be back with you in a second. Stay with us. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And welcome back to CPA here in Nashville, Tennessee. Lions lead 55-24. Well, there was a penalty committed, I guess, on the... Why not, right? Well, be the, 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 I guess it was the interference call. Ball on the one yard line taken by Irwin up the middle. Irwin try to break through the line there, get to the 20. So really that didn't hurt good pasture that much on the penalty, but the scoreboard hurts right now if you're a Cougar. Yeah, it might have been a personal foul called on the Cougars. We'll be able to find out on the stat line Must after, have been something, yeah. after the game. But, uh, you know, certainly not great field position here for, for good pasture Christian. And, you know, now you're you're really in a position here. Let's, let's, let's be real honest. What you want to do is you want to get better. You want your younger kids to get better. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a tough chore to try and come back in this football game. But you want to see young guys develop here. And, Certainly. And, and you want to go out with a good showing with no, with no quit. One of those is under center. C.J. Laws hands off the middle. A lot of room for Arrington. Arrington, Jason Arrington going into the secondary. Nice run that time by the big fullback, number 44, tackled by Chase Smith with help from 
I didn't see the number on the other. Oh, but it was a good run. Yeah, Arrington, Wiseman, Reed, uh, you know, have all have all played well tonight. Um, what's hurt is defense. You know, they have not been able to play their game because they got back. They got behind by so many points because of the explosiveness of CPA tonight. It was Chance Meyer, the junior, in the game at linebacker, helping out on the tackle that time. Here's Laws again, handoff. Arrington up the middle of the fullback. That's a very familiar play tonight for Goodpasture. A couple yards there only. Parker Howell, the sophomore, showing up. Big Parker Howell. Uh, his sister, we, we found out, is a part of that CPA girls soccer team that's doing really well in, in the state final game tomorrow, taking on CAK. So CAK and CPA matching up in soccer for the second year in a row at the AAA state tournament. And they may meet in football this year, too. You never know. Here it is, second down and eight, 2.09 to go in the third. Handoff to Irwin. Irwin breaks it inside. Tackle down there after about a three-yard gain, it looks like. It was Godwin, the first man to meet him for CPA. So it appears as if the Lions will move on. We'll try to get a score on the uh, Westmoreland-York game if we can. That was the 3-6 game right now happening at Westmoreland. Here's the run. It's going to be Wiseman going wide and getting tackled down out of bounds by a couple of different lines, including Robert Brown that time. Brown and Isaac showed up there, and they, you know, great job by CPA defensively, just kind of stringing that play out all the way to the sideline. Wiseman had nowhere to go. So fourth down here, fourth and three, and they will drop into punt formation with Wiseman. And that's where you say, with a minute to go in the third quarter, you're saying, well. We're going to go ahead and uh, punt this away. And you said it earlier, Adam, it's about getting some young guys some, some yeah. reps, probably yeah. from here on out for yeah. the Cougars. Lions will do the same, I'm sure. Wiseman, the kick. Good one. Way back. Fair catch call for him. Made there with two hands out in front of him. J.R. Osborne. He's made some uh, adventurous catches tonight back there in the in He has, the return and you know, game. He, muffed, he muffed the one. Um, but, you know, he's, he's had J.R. Osborne really, I mean, he's had a breakout game tonight. No question. With the three touchdowns and all the PATs, of course, uh, Osborne's played well. He made a nice touchdown pass last week in CPA's game at Pearl Cone. Certainly is capable, and he's an athlete. The kind of kid that you think might be able to play kicker in college, but he may be something else, too. Mm -hmm. So first and ten, CPA, Mitchell still in the game here. Ball's on the 20. In motion is Osborne hand off to Presley. Max Presley, he's quick. Oh, he gets a hard hit, though. Flag goes down, of course. Nice smack right there from Good Pastures. Bailey Baker, the freshman, hit I'll tell you what, Presley that was, hard. That was real good. Inside out, good, clean, hard tackle. Definitely a snot bubbler there. If you will. <laughs> Old school hard hit tackle on Presley. Presley flag, well, it's going to be holding against CP anyway. It didn't matter that much. How much he gained, unfortunately, for the Lions. Yet another penalty. My goodness. Well, they, I think the officials had a tough time keeping this one in check tonight. And, you know, a lot of that is is the rivalry, you know. Sure. And, and, and these two teams come out, and they're jawing at each other. Uh, the beautiful thing is how much these, these two programs and two schools respect each other. No question. Um, which, you know, makes it, all, makes it all worth it. No question. Uh, the, uh, you know, when, they, when it's all said and done at the end of the game, you can go across the field and shake hands. Well, a lot of history between these two programs and schools. Of course, Coach Drew Maddox for basketball is a good pasture graduate here at CPA's basketball coach. Here's the pass from Mitchell up toward Osborne, makes the catch. Tackle made right there by Baker, but not before Osborne made a huge catch. And, wow, JR's yardage has got to be gaining. What's the question here? It's going to be the end of the third quarter. So Mitchell's pass to Osborne gets CPA to the 48 of Good Pasture. We'll take a we'll take a breather here for the fourth quarter. It's 55-24. CPA leads one quarter to go here in Nashville. Stay with us on PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Shot this. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's 
good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. I'm over the, they go all the way around. Welcome back to CPA. Fourth quarter underway now. Lions have it. Hand off by Mitchell to Presley. Max Presley breaks out of there. Presley has the ball, bouncing and making an inside move. Presley still going. Max Presley is like a, an Evan Rude motor, and he's still going. Breaks four or five tackles. Ball comes loose. I think he's already down, though. Flag goes down, of course. What that else? was a, fan, a fantastic run by Max Good Presley. Grief. He just kept staying on his feet and spinning and staying on his feet and breaking tackles and got another penalty flag down. We'll see. Scores. Right now, it looks like, well, we don't have one yet for Westmoreland, New York. Trying to get some scores, uh, but the we only have game, the other games. Looks like CAK big, 56-21 over Loudon and their side. Also Alcoa over McMenn Central, but 28-18, a close game in that 1-8 matchup. Here is Mitchell. Handoff up the middle. Not much there. Good job by good passers in tier to sniff that one out, including 51 Bradley Hager, one of the stuffers right there. It was Yeah, Hager and James Moore showing up again. That was Presley, I think, on the carry for the Lions. Yeah, 11-15, clock running. I'd be surprised to see Chase Smith back in the ball game here. Maybe he's going to rest for next week. Mitchell's handoff to Presley. Presley up the middle. Presley stumbles and falls forward. Presley on the carry for CPA. For a few yards right there. 11 minutes to go. The Lions will certainly want to run the ball quite a bit when they have it this quarter. Presley's an interesting back to come in when you, 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 know, you pound Jace, J, uh, Chase Smith a little bit. And then you come in with Presley, who's a little bit more of a scat back, quicker type kid. Uh, a little more speed than Chase Smith, so it's a nice change of pace. Good problem to be able to have for Engel Martin trying to get them both on the field. He'll be a he's a junior this year, so one more year for Max. Mitchell's a throw to Manuel on the far side, still passing the ball right now. That time Andrew Manuel took it close. Another, another flag. Why not penalty? Call once again. Ball's marked on about the three, pending the penalty. It's holding against CPA. This may be a record of some sort. And there's somebody down, too. Got an injury on the field. And it looks like it's a, it's a lion. And one of the linemen for CPA appears to be shaken up down there. We'll take a quick break. Be right back with you here from CPA. It's 55-24 Lions lead over Good Pasture. Let's ask uh, his dad. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Back here at CPA, the injured player down the Lions. It uh, looks like it was Jack Hooper, I believe, who's walking off very slowly. Senior lineman for the Lions. He looks like he's dazed. You see, I don't even see him there, but he's uh, making his way off extremely slowly. 
So we hope uh, hope that young man is uh, yeah, is, is he's okay. A, he's a big big key for them on both sides of the football. Can't afford to lose Jack Hooper. So it'll be third down. The penalty was called against CPA. It'll be third and fifteen now. Third down from the fifth from the uh, sixteen. Here's the handoff to Presley. Presley running. Presley will be tackled down. Well, he's still fighting. That kid's a fighter. That Presley, first man to meet him there was looked like it was Wyatt Wolf, fifty-five, and then it took t- two other Cougars to get him down. Fourth down, will they kick or go for it here? Clock running at 10.03. Yeah, I don't think it's much of a decision here. I don't think you want to send your I don't think you want to send your field goal unit out there, but you know uh, Yeah, do the three points do you any good? Not much. 55-24. We've uh, remarked a moment ago that the Lions have passed the ball a little bit more than we thought they might up this much. They've been uh, throwing the ball. So we'll see what they do here with Mitchell. Fourth down, 14. Mitchell will throw it toward the end zone. Toward Richard over there. Who's got it? That's picked. Is it a pick? Oh, Touchdown. Well, it looks like they came down with almost joint possession that time. <laughs> wow. So That's the like Lions the, that, throw. Was, that was like the call. I, I'm a, I'm a the sh- Green Bay game. Yeah, I'm assuming it was Richard. It looks like it was Richard over there with a the catch. And I think Wiseman was the man. <laughs> If I'm seeing that straight, who had a chance at it on the interception for that's, good pasture. That's got to be such a tough call because we, I, couldn't, I had a great angle from right where I was, and I thought it was an interception. Obviously, the official has a better angle being right there. I see Wiseman, he's emoting right now. He's, obviously, he's very frustrated with the way that play ended. and thought he had, maybe, maybe he thought he had the INT. But as we know, Todd goes to the receiver in football, and that one was called... A catch. So 61 now, 24. I don't know for sure, but I wonder if the coaches for CBA might be sending a little bit of a signal to other teams in the state. We can score. We can score points. Yeah, we're not just a running football team. We can throw it a little bit. Osborne's kick. Osborne gets taken out there. Flag goes down, of course. Now, now it's getting out of hand. Good. Yeah, the now, kick was good. Now it's getting out of hand a little bit. With nine minutes, 29 seconds remaining in your football game, the CBA Lions 62. The good Cougars 24. So... 9.29 to go in the fourth. It's now a, officially a runaway game with 86 points scored total. Wow. And, and you know, the, the, the first game of the year they play in week one, and it's 14-7. <laughs> and if somebody would have said, with, with almost 10 minutes to go in the game, it's going to be 62-24, nobody would have believed it. I never it. thought so. No. Well, now, both teams, though, put points on the board more. The past few games, uh, we said good pasture has averaged 29 points in the past three games to, in those three victories to go 5-5. Five and five. So that's, they've got some, some offense. The CPA has scored a lot of points too, but not 62 yet. Yeah, and a lot of, I mean, this is just a remarkable game by senior Albert Mitchell. Um, you know, kind of a culmination of a lot of hard work over a couple of years and, you know, took, took some lumps and, and, and continued to grow and continue to progress. And I would, have to, I would have to venture to say that this is Albert Mitchell's greatest game as a high school football player. A lot of passing yards at halftime. We said he had, I think it was 253 uh, yards at halftime. And uh, he's added that total significantly in the second. Yeah, we'll get to those final stats to you when the game is over. But I've got to think he's close to 400 yards passing. Yeah, no question. Mitchell will uh, be playing for uh, Samford next year. Committed to the Samford uh, down in Birmingham. I want to think also that uh, CPA is uh, motivated somewhat by that loss last year to Milan. Even though a lot of new guys are new this year, they remember that that tough, gut-wrenching kind of two-point loss in the state semifinals. They may be motivated to take it back. Here's Wiseman. Wow. What a play that time. <laughs> Carter Wiseman, we said it before, we'll say it again, just keeps competing. Great just tackle. Just another flag. Alex Benedict on the tackle there. Nice tackle. but Don't it, look away. Another flag. I tell you what, uh, yeah, Wiseman ran over, almost ran over. Benedict, but Benedict was there to uh, make the stop, too. There's no quit in good pasture, and they want to keep hitting and keep hitting hard. Yeah. They want to develop and get better. Some fresh faces in the game for CPA. So here it is now, first and ten. On the 39, good pastor takes over. Hand off to Wiseman. Wiseman has a block. Wiseman churning his way. 
but about four yards, maybe five, and the clock will run at 8.30. Now, Wiseman's a kid that's played a lot of football, and he's just a fantastic football player. You know, I'm sure he's going to want to take a look at that film and see if he had the interception there at the end uh, on that last touchdown by Thomas Richard. But be that as it may, just a just a terrific effort. There have been some really, really good individual efforts out here for Good Pasture tonight, just as a team gave up too many explosive plays. Here is another run up the middle. I want to say C.J. Laws has he attempted a couple passes in the second half, just the two pass attempts in the first half, one completed. Yeah. So very few attempts. Yeah, and, you're, and, you know, and this is no knock on C.J. Laws. He's in eighth grade. Absolutely. He should not be playing in this football game tonight. It was only by necessity, sure. not by design, that he's playing. So it's no knock against the kid. In fact, not at all. the kid's really done a nice job considering – uh, you know, that he was playing middle school, you know, 15 days ago. And off up the middle to Arrington. He does a lot of things that you, it's hard to coach out of, like just that temptation for just a quarterback throwing the ball up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Laws does not do that. Yes. He did not do, you know, he did not do that. The maturity so level. The maturity level. And I've got to think that, you know, he's probably – uh, going to be, he's going to benefit greatly from from having this experience. While it's not ideal, um, awesome. back to pass now. Laws out in the flat there, and, <laughs> and nice you can pass. see you can see why the kid, you can see why he's the best option right now for him. Pass uh, complete that time as we're talking about very few pass attempts. There's one completed to I think it was Jake Herod. Yes, it was Herod. So Laws, good looking little two step drop and throw. Yeah. And, you know, Good Pastures coaching staff clearly was a little handcuffed coming into the game, you know, with such a young, inexperienced quarterback. And, you know, it's just tough. No question. 6.30 to go in the fourth. Laws, hand up the middle to Arrington. Arrington, a lot of room. Arrington churning down toward a first down. One thing Coach David Martin said is that he's impressed with C.J. Laws. You said his composure, for especially for an eighth-grade, 13-year-old young man that he's Mm. calm and steady and a quick learner. So that's a, yeah. that's a good future for good I mean, pasture in that respect. I mean, he's bounced back from that, that tackle James Elliott made on him. I mean, he bounced up like nothing, you know, nothing happened. All right, stay tuned for their player of the game. Afterward, we'll have there's a run by Wiseman. Still going. Wiseman close to another first down. I think CPA has a lot of younger guys in the game right now. Flag goes up at the end of the, Why not? that one, of course. We hope to have uh, Albert Mitchell uh, up here for a quick interview after the game. I think it was pretty easy. Playonsports.com player of the game. Maybe a little bit of voting uh, for J.R. Osborne. Osborne. Uh, Thomas Richard. Richard could, could garner some votes too, but Mitchell has been the engine tonight for the Lions with his arm. Chase Smith. And his legs. 93 yards Smith. touchdown. Really run. could have all five guys in the booth if they would fit. All four guys. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really a solid effort by. Uh, Solid effort by CPA offensively tonight. 5.20 to go, clock running in the fourth. Laws passing again in the flat, caught that time. Nice, no, incomplete. I thought he had it. I think, well, from here, it looked like he caught it, and up up with the ball in his hands was Jake Herod there saying, I caught it. I guess the referee over there, Judge, hit the ground. No replay, of course, in high school at this point anyway. That was a good-looking pass. At that time, Laws threw it where only Herod could have caught, yeah. caught it. Yeah, yeah. And he seems to get the ball out of his hand pretty quickly, which is obviously a big plus. And he seems to be pretty good handling the ball in that play action stuff. Second down, 10 handoff this time. It's Arrington. Arrington in the end zone. Yes. Touchdown. Good pasture. Another up the gut play. And the Cougars get 30 points on the board. So now we're at, what, 92 total. It's a basketball score almost. No flags this time. Injured player down for. The Cougars. Uh, that might be Arrington. Looks like maybe Arrington. Jason yeah. Arrington is down after that churning run where he just pounded it in the end zone. Strong young man scores, and he is down on the ground. You kind of hope it's a cramp. From this vantage point, it could be just a cramp. You hope it's nothing more like nothing, nothing like a knee that is more serious. So CPA is going to advance. The Lions will go to round two, the round of sixteen. Host a game next week. And they will host next week. We'll see if we can get a score. They will host the winner of Westmoreland York Institute tonight. I don't see any scores on our, our on our board yet, but uh, so Westmoreland York, Westmoreland eight and two coming in. York Institute seven and three. We got to work on. We're working our 
our tech team is working feverishly on getting <laughs> us a getting us a ticker, and it would be especially good for the playoffs. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, and that if any be... of them hear me right now, they'll probably <laughs> choke me. We love our tech team, play on sports. A big shout-out to those folks, uh, Maggie and Bill and Will and all the folks I know who do a great job supporting things uh, on the technical end. That certainly isn't. Some of us are all thumbs when it comes to technology. Myself, I'm not speaking for you, Adam. Adam, I'm sure you are a computer whiz. Hardly. Bobby Brooks here knows what his, knows his stuff. Bobby Brooks is the whiz. Adamopoulos. <laughs> Nobody beats the whiz. He's on down the road. Boy, not that kind of whiz. <laughs> That was that was an old uh, that was an old uh, electronic store in New York. Whiz, aha! Uh-huh. And so people would say, and the the jingle was, "Nobody beats the Whiz." Hmm. We should leave it at that, perhaps. Um, Sixty-two thirty-one. Four thirty-seven left to go in the ball game. What are you going to do? Co- yeah, if you're yeah, we're it, talking about electronic stores. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, just it is what it is. A good shout out to. Uh, I look, I see CPA's uh, coach, uh, Philip Hancock, down there, linebacker's coach. He's had to do some juggling with injuries. Yeah. Right now they're putting a, a new new jersey on a player down there. Can't tell, but that's uh, – and, and, anyway. And I don't know. I, I guess you, you we, we said earlier ch- there's a chance Chris Charles comes back for next week's ball coach game. Coach Eagle Martin today said he's got a pinky toe that's either broken or – Something, but he is a game time decision for next week's game. Got it. Okay, and, and Sam Landers, Landers looked is, like he made it through the game he's tonight. In. Fleener and Nichols certainly out. Yeah, sir, uh, Nichols, yes, uh, concussion issues there. Yeah, a lot of that going around these days. Uh, boy, I hate to see those, those head injuries. So we'll see if an onside kick is forthcoming here, perhaps for Good Pasture. Four thirty-seven to go. And opposite line up that way. Well, no, he'll pooch it. Flag or the whistle blows first. We'll have to find out the health of Jack Hooper. Hooper went out uh, looking very dazed earlier. Let's see if we can see him on the sideline down there. I do. I think I see him down with Matt Weitzel sitting on the bench. Matt Weitzel is a trainer for uh, CPA on this side. And Hooper being attended to there by the training staff, the star physical therapy training staff. So we'll see about that. But uh, I think Eagle Martin believes he has a deep team this year. They've got a lot of depth at several positions they, that may benefit them as the playoff uh, run for them continues if it does. Yeah, and you've got to think that with the offensive firepower that they displayed here tonight uh, and, and continuing to play solid uh, defensive football and then eliminating those special teams mistakes, you can't give up kickoff return for touchdowns. Um, and if you can do that and you can sharpen your skills – you know, I think Ingle Martin might have the type of team that can make a pretty deep run. Kick there is a fair caught by the Lions, uh, William Trapnell. For the Lions, made by number 26, William Trapnell. And Trapnell, uh, certainly no stranger to uh, Christ Presbyterian Academy football. They've had several, he's had several brothers. Uh, no, Lewis Trapnell has graduated last year. So it'll be Lions football. Now it's a matter for good pasture of, uh, you said earlier, getting some players, uh, some reps who, uh, for experience for next year, looking ahead to the future. A lot of young guys. New quarterback in for CPA. We're going to have some numbers uh, challenges here. Nice play there. Nice throw and catch. It was Zach Weatherly, the quarterback. He's a freshman in the game, and he throws it uh, complete to Grady Sutton. So some younger guys, maybe the future of uh, CPA there, Zach Weatherly. Glimpse of the future for CPA. Off the freshman. uh, And and Coach Martin over at Good Pasture knows exactly what Coach Martin for CPA is doing right here. Hand off to Joe Trice. Trice running, running well, running, still running. Trice fighting his way down to the 31. Broke the tackle there. Would be tackled by Jake Herod at one point. And uh, kept going down to 31, so the Lions might add more points. Who knows? Uh, uh, they're certainly not throwing the ball anymore. They're only running now. Yeah, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Weatherly throw the ball a little bit here. You know, CPA, they want to see what they've got with Weatherly and get him a couple of throws in a game. And I don't think if you're good pasture, you're going to take too much offense to that at this point. You just, you've got a freshman quarterback out there. You just want to see, just want to see what he can do a little bit. Experience. Uh, hand off to Trice again, Joe. Helmet comes off one of the. Uh, oh. Actually, that was uh, yeah Bradley Hager who's played hard all oh. night. Wow, 
Bradley certainly leaving on the field. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for the way that young man played tonight. I mean, he showed up with a lot of key, key stops early. Hager, one of the seniors, of course, that is one of the things you, you often forget about. This is their last game of their yeah. high school career. There's got to be a lot of emotions. And the Hager goes out with his helmet off as, as per the rule. But certainly that's a bittersweet thing when you're a senior playing your last game in any sport. 2.18, the clock running here. And taking a knee will be Weatherly in the V formation, if you will, for CPA. Lions will go to 11 and 0, and Good Pasture will finish at 5 and 6 on the year. And the playoff run continues for CPA as they move on to the round of 16. Impressive win tonight for for Christ Presbyterian Academy. Uh, the Lions held serve at home, 2-7 game, but couldn't have been a worse matchup with, with good pasture coming in, a team that's so dangerous and so well coached. You just, you know, if you're Ingle Martin Saturday morning's draw, you probably didn't want to see that happen. <laughs> but to make it through in, in a very impressive fashion, um, you know, Westmoreland and York Institute, two good football teams. Somebody's going to come out of that game tonight and be the matchup here at CPA next Friday night. And whichever team that is, they're going to have their hands full because no CPA is a good football team. No question. Uh, the Lions have proven themselves this, this season to be uh, multidimensional, balanced on the run and on the, in the passing game, and, of course, very strong defensively. Clock now 104 and running. They'll take another knee. It's fourth down, and we'll see that. They may get, turn the ball over on downs, a good pasture, but uh, or they may throw a pass here. You never know. Weatherly, he'll punt. It's a quick kick. And will be touched there by Good Pastures' uh, Anthony Murphy. The senior is in the game. And good play by him realizing once that touched him, that was yeah. uh, going to be a loose ball. And we'll probably have one or two more snaps left in the ball game. But, you know, Weatherly gets to get in there, the freshman quarterback for CPA, and gets, you know, gets to make a throw, get, a, get his first high school completion. I'm sure he feels good about that. Sure. sure. And uh, immediately following the game, well, not immediately following the game, but we're going, to, uh, we're going to have Albert Mitchell up here, the PlayOnSports.com player of the game. Well, we have a score, by the way. Speaking of, good, of uh, breaking news, looks like here, according to the uh, scoreboard, it's Westmoreland 35 and York Institute 7. So Westmoreland, the three seed, will uh, advance at, and become 9-2, and two, and they'll come to CPA next Friday night. So 9-2 and two, Westmoreland coming to visit 11-0 and 0 CPA in a matchup that... Get bigger. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people in the Westmoreland area will look forward to. Absolutely. There will be some folks traveling this, this direction. Other scores of interest uh, in the other quadrant to the west, it's Milan uh, over Manassas, 44-6 to six tonight, the three over the six. So Milan Milan, a dangerous on. team. Did not have a It did not have uh, a typical Milan year in that they went 8-2, and two, but they won a lot of close ball games. Um, and they didn't, they didn't just roll through the schedule and dominate. We have Cheatham County, also the number one seed in this, in this quadrant, moves on 48-30 winner over Grundy County. So the 1-8 game, maybe closer than some might have thought, 48-30, yeah. but uh, Cheatham County takes care of business in that one. Here is a hand, nope, yes, a handoff to Baker. And Baker up the middle, gains about five. That will probably be the last play of this ball game with 20 seconds on the clock. And that will be a wrap, my goodness, 62 31. So CBA doubles up. Is that right? Yes, mathematically. Doubles up. That's right. Good pastor. I'm a journalist. 30, 31 times 2 is 62 <laughs> all day. I'm a journalism uh, graduate. Nothing to do with math. So there the clock runs out. One play. Yes, it'll be the last play of the game. Baker will run. Baker has room. Baker will be taken down at the 40 by Osborne. He's still in the game. And that will do it. No, it wasn't Osborne. I apologize. Let me get that number right. It was 77 for CPA. That time, John Luke Duvall. Ladies and gentlemen. Made the play, and the game will end with CPA in convincing fashion, proving that it's uh, for real going to 11 and 0 in this first round 3A playoff game. The Lions defeat the Good Pasture Cougars, 62-31. And Good Pasture will end the season five and six, and go home after a courageous comeback, really, for the Cougars this season to get to even get to the playoffs at all. Coach David Martin certainly his team will not hang their heads. Yeah, Good Pasture is going to come in. Uh, you know, going to leave uh, not victorious tonight, but uh, 
was all out to finish four and one over their last five games to just make it to the playoffs after the one and four start. And uh, this, you know, this season was a little bit rocky for the good pasture, uh, good pasture Cougars. And you know, they'll be back. You know, they'll be they'll be back. This is a, a good school with good tradition, great tradition, great coaching staff. And uh, we haven't heard the last of the Cougars, I'm sure. But tonight's CPA's night, and they're going to advance. The question the Lions will go to now. Let's see if I can get, do the math on the past two years. 11 victories this this year. It was 12 and two last year. So that would be 23 and two under Ingle Martin. 23 and two under coaching Ingle Martin. His second year here after coaching briefly at Ensworth uh, before that part of their state championship run. And of course, Martin. Uh, Two-time uh, Mr. Football for NBA and uh, play football at Florida and then at Furman and then NFL for the, the Packers, uh, Chiefs, Titans. Uh, so he's certainly one that uh, has quite a pedigree. And, uh, yeah, and the one guy that's benefited from that pedigree has been Albert Mitchell. Albert Mitchell, our and player of the game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Albert saved his, his best for the opening round of the playoffs. I mean, he was sharp tonight right from – Right from the get-go, I was really impressed with the cutback on the on the touchdown run down at the goal line on the fourth down call, and um, you know just uh, just all around just just sharp. I, I can only remember him really missing the one throw, the sprint to the left in the first quarter where he overshot Richard, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on the on the quick out. Uh, other than that, I mean, Albert Mitchell was was pretty much on the on the money tonight. And we'll have the stat, the official stats momentarily. The first half he was 12 of 16, so he he certainly has been was sharp. Now both teams meeting in the middle midfield. We'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minute minutes with our PlayOnSports.com player of the game, Albert Mitchell. So stick around. CPA defeats Good Pasture. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. At this. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And we're back here in Nashville at CPA where the Lions have defeated Good Pasture. Score of 62-31 to 31 in this first round 3A playoff game. Huge offensive night led by this man right here, young man right here, Albert Mitchell, senior quarterback for CPA, heading to Samford next year. But right now he's focused on CPA's playoff run, which started with a bang tonight offensively. Albert, 384 yards passing on 16 of 20. Good night for you, really good night for you. Is that your best night in high school? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. What made the difference? What was it so um, good? It was uh, just building off the momentum of last week, um, having a good week, and then another great week of practice. Um, just getting better and better each week and, uh, you know, just coming out and executing the night. We were laughing about the fact that that first game of the season, 14-7, is more of a defensive struggle. Mm -hmm. This game quite the opposite. What do you think between then and now has happened to CBA's offense? Um, well, I think uh, just the development of the uh, camaraderie between everybody. Um, you know, obviously teams are going to get better as the season goes on, and, uh, you know, our guys have just grown, grown so close um, over these past few weeks, and, uh, you know, it's really shown out on the field. A lot of big plays tonight. Can you think of one play that in your mind sticks out as the biggest uh, maybe pass and catch of the night? Oh, man, biggest pass and catch. Um, 
I'd say uh, probably the bomb uh, over the middle to Thomas. That was great. Um, you know, him making a great catch and then breaking a couple tackles right as he caught it. And that was that was an amazing play. Down here with three guys yeah, on him and yes, sir. Mm -hmm. amazing. Osborne, of course, has three touchdowns tonight. Right. Yeah. So he's a target. So you got really several different weapons in your in your arsenal. Is that, does that help you as a quarterback to know you have different places to go with the ball? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, knowing knowing that you have playmakers everywhere is always great. Um, you know, you you're able to make your reads and, you know, know that whoever it goes to, they're going to catch the football and make a play. Now, two years ago, you are a good pass. Your first start, I believe it was, or maybe second start. Right. And it's a tough, tough game for, for you as a younger quarterback then. Talk about the difference between that game and, and what happened tonight in terms of your career development. Um, I think uh, maturity um, and getting the work in practice a lot obviously has been huge. Um, it's funny, actually, a bunch of guys on the field were telling me uh, I got my vengeance tonight from that. Um, <laughs> That was that, a tough that, game for yeah, you. Yeah, that it? was a tough game. But, uh, yeah, it was a great night tonight, and, uh, you know, we're uh, looking to keep moving forward from the playoffs. And we know that uh, Ingle Martin, of course, your coach, Coach Martin, uh, quarterback like you, punter like you, what about the difference he has made, the positive difference in, in your development as a player these two years? Oh, he's been unbelievable. Um, just all his knowledge um, that he's passed down and, you know, just holding me accountable to always work hard and, uh, you know, be a student of the game. Um, you know, he knows so much, and, you know, I can't I can't tell how much of a blessing it, it has been to have him as a coach. Albert Mitchell, our PlayOnSports.com player of the game tonight. Huge night. Again, 384 yards passing, 16 of 20. Good night for Albert. Good night for his team as they win big here against Good Pasture. Thanks, Albert, for joining us. Yes, sir. Next week, you guys have Westmoreland here at CPA. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Back in a moment. We're still on.